Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. During the declared emergency in the City of Toronto, Committee of Adjustment virtual public hearings are being conducted by electronic means through WebEx, an online digital platform and streamed on the Toronto City Planning YouTube channel. These measures are necessary to comply with physical distancing requirements and in-person attendance limitations. <clears throat> Excuse me. This will be a virtual public hearing and participants who have registered in advance will be able to make their presentations to the committee using a WebEx, an online event that is being moderated by city staff. Anyone wishing to view the hearing may do so by watching it on YouTube. Participants who have registered in advance will be connecting either by their computer, a phone or tablet app, or by telephone. All participants are automatically muted on entry. When your item is called, each participant will be unmuted by the moderator, one person at a time. Only the committee members are participating by video. Any registered participants will be participating by audio only. We ask that you also mute your devices until you are called on to speak. For all those who are waiting online, please ensure that you have called in with the phone number that you were originally registered with. If you call in with a different number, you will not be able to speak on that item. To ensure audio clarity, I strongly suggest that you do not use the speakerphone function on your telephones. We acknowledge that the land we are meeting on is the traditional territory of many nations, including the Mississaugas of the Credit, the Anishinaabe, the Chippewa, the Haudenosaunee, and the Wendat peoples, and is now home to many diverse First Nations, Inuit, and Métis peoples. We also acknowledge that Toronto was covered by Treaty 13 with the Mississaugas of the Credit. In accordance with Sections 45 and 53 of the Planning Act, 1990 is amended. This meeting of the Committee of Adjustment of the City of Toronto is called to order. My name is Alan Smithies, and I will chair today's meeting. Joining us on the panel today are Ron Hunt, Paul Kidd, and Nadini Sankar Peralta. City staff are also present, Simon Lamb, Adam Wills, and Chris Pereira. The Committee of Adjustment considers applications for variances from the provisions of the zoning bylaw that apply to property, per permission to extend or alter lawful non-conforming uses, and consent to sever property to create new lots. Anyone attending today who wants to receive a copy of the committee's decision must submit a written request for a decision by email. Please ensure that you include your name, address, and email address because Committee of Adjustment and the T-Lab will be sending notifications and appeal updates by email. If you do not agree with the committee's decision, it may be appealed to, to the Toronto Local Appeal Body, T-Lab, or in some li limited circumstances to the Ontario Land Tribunal. Appeal instructions are set out at the bottom of the committee's decision. The hearing procedure is as follows. I will call each item in the order listed on the agenda. Where an application is uncontested, the agent or applicant will proceed with their presentation if desired. If the committee does not require a presentation, applicants are to advise the chair should they wish to speak on that item. The committee may ask questions and or take the matter into the committee for a decision. Each speaker, including the applicant or agent, is given a maximum of five minutes to address the committee. I will comment when you are reaching the five minute limit. When addressing the committee, please state clearly your name and address. Please remember to confine your remarks to the matters described in the application. The applicant or agent proceeds first and will make their presentation to the committee. Please note that the committee may not entertain revisions to proposals at the hearing today. To ensure that a revised application is accurate and that all those entitled to notice of the application are informed of the changes, the committee may decide to defer the application if it has been substantially revised. Then individuals either in support or opposed to the application are invited to speak. Committee members may ask questions of each speaker after they have finished their presentation. When all the speakers are finished, the applicant or agent has an opportunity to rebut only those issues that were raised by the previous speakers. This marks the end of discussion on the item. The application is then taken into committee for a decision. I understand we have no, meet and we have no minutes to adopt. I'll just ask the committee members, do they have any conflicts of interest they'd like to declare? Mr. Kidd? Mr. Chair, I have a, 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 an interest. Uh, I want to declare uh, item number four, uh, 178 Alexandra Boulevard, 
and uh, item number 1624, Lee Croft Crescent. I'm acquainted with the uh, agent. Okay. Uh, just, uh, it was a little hard to hear you, Mr. Kidd, but uh, you have a conflict on item number 4178, Alexandria Boulevard. Yes, and also um, item number 16. Okay, just a moment. For Lee Croft Crescent. And item number 1624, Lee Croft. That's correct. Thank you, sir. I note that uh, Mr. Kahn is now in session with us, though he's, he's our, for, our uh, fourth member. Thank you very much, Mr. Mr. Kahn. Good to see you. Uh, we'll now go. We have no uh, files to close. <laughs> I understand we have a couple of deferral requests. Item number 17, 171 Craighurst Avenue. We have a request for a deferral. And I have, let me just go to that item. I have a Drew Laszlo. Are you there, Mr. Laszlo? Drew Laszlo, are you there? Yes, I am. Yes, Mr. Now? Laszlo, I just, uh, this is 171 Craighurst Avenue. I, my understanding, you uh, would like to ask for a deferral? Um, yes, we have some neighborly opposition, which we feel we can work out if we have just a little more time. And we'd also uh, like to get urban forestry on site as well. Okay, just a, a moment here. I just wanted to ask, sir, uh, there, we did have a comment from Urban Forestry, which was recommending that your application be refused due to a potential removal of a private black walnut tree. Uh, I would, uh, if you're asking for a deferral, I would suggest you discuss this issue with Urban Forestry as well. Yes, we will definitely be doing that. Okay, thank you. I have two other persons who had registered to speak, so I'm just going to ask them that. They're, uh, just ask the committee. Does the committee have any questions of the speaker? There being none, I'll go to the next person on the list. Uh, D. Andrew Beatty, are you there? Is he, is he there, Mr. Wills? D. Andrew Beatty, are you there? D. Andrew Beatty, are you there? Here, can you hear me? Hello? Can you hear me now? It's very hard to hear you. Can you speak up? Absolutely, yes. I, I'm here and uh, I, I uh, accept the deferral. Very hard to hear you, sir. You have to speak up. Uh, I, I'm here and I accept the deferral. Okay. Uh, we have a request, sir, from the... Uh, Applicant, he's asking for a deferral, and that's to discuss some issues with urban forestry as well with the abutting neighbors. Do you have an objection to a deferral? No objection. No objection. Thank you. Okay, thank you. I, any questions of the speaker? Being none, I'll go. We have one other person registered to speak. I think it's Maru Strasdine. Are you there? You hear me? Yes, can I get your full name and address, please? It's Mara Strasden at 173 Craighurst Avenue. Yes, thank you. Uh, Madam, do you have an objection to uh, the applicant's request for a deferral? Uh, no, I don't. I'm, I'm good with the deferral. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Madam. Does the committee have any questions of the speaker? No, thank you. We'll go back to, uh, if I could get a motion on this deferral request, please. Ms. Sankar? Yes, thank you, Mr. Chair. I'll put forward a motion to um, approve a deferral of this application. Hang on, just, just a second, Ms. Sankar. Mr. Wells, it's very hard to hear. Yeah, I'll, 
Mr. Chair, I'll uh, reach out to broadcast control right now and try and have them turn up the volume in the chambers here. Um, otherwise, I'd like to remind members and attendees to really uh, speak loudly into your microphone so we can yeah. pick you up as it is kind of uh, quiet here in the chambers. Yeah. Thank you, Ms. Sanger. My apologies if you could, you, you pretty, you have to, you have to really speak up. Thank you. Okay. I, I don't have a problem doing that. I love <laughs> shouting. So <laughs> um, I'll put forward a mo motion to uh, approve um, this uh, deferral and give the um, uh, client a chance to work with forestry and planning on this application. Signy die. Thank you. Someone to second Ms. Sanker's motion. Mr. Hunt seconds. All those in favor? That motion carries unanimously. Sir, your application has been deferred to the next available meeting so that you can meet with the affected residents and urban forestry. Good luck, sir. Thank you very much. Thank you. Item, we have another deferral request. Item number 20, 25 Yorkview Drive. I have... Uh, the agent of Randall Dickey, are you there, sir? Mr. Dickey, are you there? Randall Dickey, are you there? I am here. Can you hear me now? Yes, I can hear you, sir. Can I get your full name and address, please? Uh, yes, thank you. Good morning, Mr. Chair and members of the committee. I'm Randall Dickey, the authorized agent for the property owner. Uh, my mailing address is uh, 1111 Davis Drive, Newmarket, Ontario. Okay, thank you, sir. I understand you're asking a deferral. Can I ask the reason for a deferral? Yes, we are asking for a deferral. Um, I have reviewed the public notice comments that have come in, and I've sat down with the owner and the designer, and uh, we're asking for a deferral so that we can uh, obviously make modifications to the proposal, uh, specifically um, focusing on the side yard setbacks. So we're asking for a deferral so that we can revise our concept and come back with a revised proposal when we're ready. Okay, thank you, sir. Just wanted to let you know I have, there's two uh, reports on file with your application. I wanted to let you know there's uh, one from Transportation Services dated the 1st of March. Uh, they have no objections to the proposed driveway width. There's also a report, a uh, letter from Councillor Filion dated the 8th of March. Uh, his letter recommends uh, refusing your application, especially with respect to those side yards. So you may want to just touch base with Councillor Filion's office when you get the chance. Uh, I'll just ask. Yes. I'll just ask the committee. Does the committee have any questions of the speaker? There being none, we have three other persons registered to speak, so I'm just going to get their views on the deferral. I uh, have an El Eliza Giannone, G-I-A-N-N-O-N-E. Are you there? Eliza Giannone, are you there? I'll go to the next person. One more time, Mr. Chair. Pardon me? Uh, try them one more time. Okay. Uh, Eliza Giannone. I'm here. Oh, yes. Hello. Can I get your full name and address, please? Elisa Giannone, um, 23 and 17 Yorkview Drive. Okay. Thank you, madam. So I'm the immediate neighbor. Yes. Thank you, madam. Do you have any objections to the applicant's request for a deferral? Yes. I... Uh, uh, for a deferral, um, no, I, I don't think, what does that mean exactly? He's just well, going to go well, back and redo. Okay, redo. Uh, what, in, in brief, he's, he wants to make changes to his application, specifically uh, yeah. the setbacks. And in order to do that, he defers it, he makes his changes, resubmits them, uh, and then if it requires variances again, that will be, again, circulated to the neighborhood and you'd have the opportunity yeah, to so comment him on it. But basically, he wants to come back with a different plan. Sure. Yeah, no, no, I have no objections to, to the deferral. Okay, thank you very much. Does the committee have any questions of the speaker? Go to the next person on the list. Uh, Doug Wilson, are you there? 
Mr. Chair, it appears that uh, there is no Doug Wilson on the call at this okay. time. Thank you, Mr. Wills. I'll go to the next person on the list, Ann McConnell. Are you there? Ms. McConnell, are you there? Yes, I'm here. Yes, can, can I you get your me? full name and address, please? Yes, my name is Ann McConnell, 33 York Hugh Drive. Yes, thank you, madam. Do you have an objection to the applicant's request for a deferral? I do not have an objection to the request for deferral and appreciate that they are addressing the side yard setbacks because um, on this street there are virtually no variances of any kind. So we appreciate the deferral. Okay, thank you, madam. Does the committee have any questions of the speaker? There being none, could I get a motion on the deferral request, please? Mr. Kidd. Mr. Kidd, we can't hear you. No luck, Mr. Kidd. Uh, can, I get, can I get someone else to make a motion, please, Mr. Hunt? Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, based on the uh, request of the applicant uh, to make changes to his uh, submission, I would uh, recommend or move uh, approval for deferral sine die. Thank you, Mr. Hunt. Someone to second that motion? Ms. Sankar seconds. All those in favor? That motion carries unanimously. Mr. Dickey, your application has been uh, deferred to the next available meeting so that you can uh, uh, make those changes and uh, discuss those changes with the, the neighborhood. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. We'll go back to our uh, regular agenda. Start with item number one, 60 to 64 Roselawn Avenue. I have three people registered to speak. The agent is a Babak. Zaddy, I-Z-A-D-I. Are you there, sir? Mr. Chair, there does not appear to be anyone listed on the call under the name Babak Zaddy at this time. That's the agent. Correct. That's the agent. And I don't see him on the call at this time. Uh, okay. Um, is the agent there for 60 to 64 Roselawn Avenue? Mr. Chair, like I just said, I, I don't see them on the list of attendees at this moment. Okay, so we'll what we'll, we'll do is we'll just set it set it down to the I'll end. I'll hold the, it down I'll to the end of the session. I'll reach out to the agent and confirm their attendance. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Wills. There was no one as there was no one uh, there was no no one designated as an alternate for an agent. It should be noted that the agent themselves did not register for the meeting in advance. Okay. All right, this often you. causes problems. So I'll reach out to the agent and remind them that it's important to always register in advance of the meeting and remind them that they are uh, that they should. Look Thanks, Mr. Attend. Wills. Go, we'll proceed to item number two, which is 37 Wilkett Road. I have one, two, three, four, five, six. Six people registered to speak. The agent is a Chris Pereira. Are you there? I am, Mr. Chair. Can everyone hear me? Yes, I can hear you, sir. Can I get your full name and address, please? Sure. My name is Chris Pereira. I am at 100 Coxwell Avenue in Toronto, Ontario. Okay, thank you, sir. I just wanted to go through, uh, going through your file, I note there are a number of reports listed here. There is a, re a letter from Councillor Robinson dated the 1st of March. Uh, she's recommending your application be refused. We have a transportation services report um, dated the 1st of March which appears to have no objections, but there is also a development engineering report dated the 25th of January of 2022, uh, which had no objections to, the stand, to uh, subject to standard conditions, including a requirement for a uh, 0 0.4 meter conveyance along the Bayview Avenue frontage, as well as the lifting of the 0 0.305 meter reserve along the Bayview Avenue frontage, which I don't see illustrated on your site plan. 
Uh, I just wanted to ask, sir, uh, with respect to that, uh, the conveyance point zero point four meters. Can you uh, you'll you'll give us a presentation? But if you can address those issues in your presentation, please. Yep, I will. I will speak to that. <clears throat> okay, thank you, sir. Please proceed. Sure. Um, good morning, Mr. Chair, members of committee. Um, as I said, my name is Chris Brown. I am the principal of Simple Bar Planning and Design Limited, the planning consultant for the owner. The development application uh, proposes. Mr. Sorry? Pereira, hang on a second. We're having trouble hearing you. Oh. Okay. Can you start over? Sure. I can. Uh, I can. I want to start by describing the proposal. Um, so the development application proposes to sever the existing property into two generally evenly sized lots and further proposes two story detached dwellings on the newly created parcels with only one variance for an existing condition. These dwellings will be of a luxury quality and a design that will be an excellent addition to the area. Now, in terms of the variance itself, the application before committee today represents a reasonable request to seek relief from the lot frontage requirements of the bylaw. It is noted that the north lot, lot A, is fully compliant with the existing zoning and as such does not require any variances. The south lot, lot B, needs only one variance for minimum lot frontage, whereas 30 meters is required, 23.65 meters is provided. I want to emphasize that the variance request seeks to recognize the existing frontage of the south lot onto Wilkett Road. So if you look at the curved property line, that is the existing lot frontage of this property, and that is the, the existing frontage that this variance seeks to recognize. The north lot A does not require any variances at all. Very quickly, I want to, dis, the, to speak to the description of the area. Um, we're familiar that it is characterized by primarily one and two story residential detached dwellings. Uh, the lots in this area are larger than the average lot sizes, and they have a varied, varied orientation. We note that the Bayview corridor has been subject to intensification by way of townhouses, and that's in accordance with the Bayview Avenue townhouse guidelines. Now, I want to take a few minutes to, to respond to some of the comments that we have been tracking and that have been submitted. Um, so the first, I've been able to kind of, there was a number of letters, I wanted to group them into kind of categories. So the first matter I wanted to speak to was the previous LPAT decision. So we know that there was a previous LPAT decision that refused the application. And I just want to point out that the owner has accepted the previous committee and TLAB decision to refuse the previous applications. The owner is committed to proceeding with two single T-Dutch dwellings by spending the time and money to go through this process um, that we are involved in today. They've also committed to um, undergoing permit applications and are being sought respectively to, to construct what is before committee today. Um, I also want to point out that the application has notably changed since the original uh, refusal, whereas a vacant north block was shown that could, could potentially accommodate townhouses, we are now committed to a single detached dwelling. And another difference was that the previous application requested six to seven variances for the proposed southern lot, whereas uh, now we only require the lot frontage requirement. The second matter had to do with Bayview access. So as for the recent ECS services, combo, uh, services memo dated January 21st, city staff have agreed to lift the one foot reserve subject to various conditions. The one foot reserve that we're talking about applies only to the lot A driveway onto Bayview across the extent of the driveway, which has been shifted to the south property line of that lot. You can see in the image here where our driveway goes, the one foot reserve applies only to that, that, that width of the driveway that now fronts onto, onto Bayview. Um, uh, as for the recent transportation services memo, staff have accepted the driveway location and that's based on city requirements and in, and in response to the changes we've made. The third item, and it has to do with the driveway location, it has to do with saving trees and shifting the driveway to the south actually allowed us to save a number of trees that were in the northwest corner. But speaking of tree preservation, uh, we do acknowledge forestry staff's default position of opposing removal of private trees, and that's based on the city's bylaw. However, we've been working very closely with forestry and exchanged a number of emails as recent as February 25th of 2022, and forestry staff have accepted our changes to the driveway location, and that's done to protect as many trees as possible. 
um, as I mentioned. The second thing that they've accepted is the details pertaining to the construction of the driveway to minimize impacts on those uh, surrounding trees. And lastly, uh, a tree planting plan that provides additional planting as for the requirements and bylaws of the city requirements, forestry staff has accepted that as well. Um, now, in terms of the four tests of minor variance, I'm probably running close, I'm, I'm nearly done. Um, the proposal maintains the intent of the official plan. The Sir, can you summarize, the... please? Sure. Um, just want to, to close off by saying it meets the four tests of minor, minor variance. It maintains the intent of the official plan and zoning bylaw. The zoning and LP uh, are geared for singles. We need one very, very minor variance. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Frontage, and that is all. Thank you. Uh, I wanted to ask, have you had, uh, with respect to the, the foot reserve uh, from the new property you're creating, you, you have no legal right of access right now to Bayview Avenue, correct? That is correct, but transportation staff has agreed to, to lift the one foot reserve but across it, the it, width of our driveway. It, you understand that, you, uh, it's, it's, our, it's my understanding that approval to, lift the foot, approval to lift the foot reserve has to come from council. Yes, that, that is, if that's the, the process by which it, it gets done, then, then that is correct. So council could easily say there's a, there was a reason they put the foot reserve there, which was so that the property couldn't have access to an arterial road. So in, in this particular case, there's nothing to suggest that council could refuse you access, correct? No, there's nothing to suggest that. Okay, thank you. Uh, does the committee have any questions of the speaker? Mr. Kidd? Oh, Mr. Kidd, now we, I'm sorry we can't hear you. I, uh, oh, that, I, yeah, I, there you, you are. Chair. Okay, <laughs> I'm having trouble with my mute button here today. Uh, my, my question, uh, the, uh, the letter from the uh, Councillor Robinson, uh, one of her main concerns was the, uh, uh, she says the proposal involved uh, uh, removing 18 protected trees, but we don't have a, a report from forestry or any comments. Uh, I, I'm just uh, not clear. That, uh, are you going to be removing uh, trees on uh, based on this proposal or um, uh, what were, were your uh, discussions with the uh, uh, city forestry, if I could. Sure, through you, Mr. Chair. What, what, and that this is what I spoke to in terms of the tree, the tree preservation discussions with forestry staff. So the default position, because of the, the the private tree bylaw, the default position by staff is automatically to refuse an application when when we're in this type of situation. However, we continue to work with forestry staff to kind of address their concerns to the full extent feasible, and we have provided a tree preservation plan that they have accepted. And I'm going to outline the details of that tree preservation plan. So the most up to date, and this has been changed because we shifted the driveway location, but as it stands right now, 16 trees are to be removed, 43 are to be preserved, 28 replacement trees are required, 20 replacement trees have been provided, and cash in lieu is proposed for the remaining eight trees. This is what forestry staff have accepted in their memo, uh, sorry, not their memo, in an email dated February 22nd. They acknowledge that they accepted this. However, uh, and, and to paraphrase, their hands are tied because of the private tree bylaw. Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you. Uh, does the committee have any further questions of the speaker? And being none, I'll go to the next person on the list. I have a Margaret Nightingale, are you there? Ms. Nightingale, are you there? Mr. Chair, it appears Margaret is not on the call at this time. Okay, thank you. We'll go to the next person on the list. I have a Doris Chin. Are you there? Mr. Chair, it does not appear Doris is on the call at this time. Okay, thank you. We'll go to the next person on the list. I have a Zara Haslow, H-A-A-S-L-O. Are you there? Zara Haslow, are you there? 
Yes, I'm here. Can you hear me? Yes, I can yes. hear you. Can I get your full name and address, please? Yes, my name is Zara Haslo. My address is 2533 Bayview Avenue, North York, Ontario, M2L1B1. Okay, thank I you, madam. If you'd like to give us your property. thoughts on this application. Yes, yes. My family, thank you, committee and the chairman. My family owns 2533 Bayview Avenue dwelling and has been calling this address home for the past 23 years. Our property is adjacent to 37 Bilkett Road on the north. We ask that the committee refuses a consent to sever this property, and it also refuses to grant the minor variances for the construction of a new detached dwelling on the retained lot. This case has already been heard by the committee and the T Lab, and both have refused the applications. As neighbors, we have we have been opposing both the variance and the consent since 2018. Have spent a lot, great deal of time and money. We've hired representation, attended numerous meetings and the hearings. And we can't believe that the same application has been filed again. And as you mentioned, our um, city councillor, Ms. Jay Robinson, is also opposing this development. At the moment, we are already surrounded by five neighbors. To the north side of our property, we have 2533, sorry, 2535 Bayview that's approved for three plus story townhouse development facing the Baby Avenue with additional multi-story detached houses in Durer. The implication of this development is that we have two neighbors to the north of our property, one in our front yard, one, one in our backyard. To the south, we are neighbors with 35 and 37 Wilkett Road. This, the new second house construction on the 37 Wilkett Road will effectively place an extra house in our front yard with a very minimal setback, severely affecting our privacy, way of life, and ultimately our property value. The property on number 37 Wilkett only fronts to Wilkett Road and has no relationship to Bayview Avenue, and it only has access to Wilkett Road. The created lot is to front on the Baby Avenue, an arterial busy road along which there is a 0.3 meter reserve to which it has no access at the moment. The lot to be created would not front on Baby Avenue because of that three meter reserve in place along that road. And the bylaws in place specifically prohibit development on lots subject to such a reserve. The partition of this land will severely impact would have a severe impact on the urban forest in the area. The zoning bylaw applying to the created lot would result in the right to destroy numerous reg regulated trees on the site. And their report indicates that they have, they have already removed 10 trees and they propose to remove another 23. And many of them have actually, I've checked that they have diameters over a meter um, the trunk diameter is over a meter, and some of them are actually centennial trees. And I don't see any permit for the, tree, the for the ten trees that have already been removed because the application was not even approved. The developments on each lot will not respect or reinforce the character of the area. This neighborhood consists of largely and slightly single detached dwellings. They are placed on large lots with large setbacks and a lot of green space. Um, but by cutting this land to two, you won't be preserving the characteristics of the neighborhood. Another concern is that once the consent for severing is granted, the extra lot created would be eligible for a denser development as a result of the consent. Previously, the applicant wanted to build five townhouses after severing that land. The townhouse development application was withdrawn, although it might still proceed by way of rezoning if the consent to sever and create a new lot is granted. This was never the intent of the city planning bylaws for this land. The parcel is strictly prohibited from dense development as it currently has no relationship to the Bayview Avenue and only fronts the Wilkett Road. We kindly ask that the committee refuses both the applications, the consent and the variance, as they do not meet all the four tests under their bylaws. Thank you so much for um, listening to me. Thank you, Madam. Does the uh, committee have any questions of the speaker? There being none, I'll go to the next person on the list. I have a Michael Kara, K-A-R-A. Are you there? Uh, Mr. Chair and members, it does not appear Michael is on the call at this time. 
Okay, thank you. Uh, we'll go to the next person on the list, a U Zhu, Z-H-U, are you there? Mr. Chair, it does not appear they are on the call at this time. Okay, um, let's go back again. Michael Kara, are you there? No, Mr. Chair, there is no one on the call at this time under the name Michael Kara. Okay, thank you, Mr. Wills. That's the end of our speakers. Uh, I'll go back to Mr. Pereira, are you there? Mr. Pereira, are you Mr. there? Chair. Yes, I am. Mr. Pereira, you heard the comments from uh, Ms. Haslow. If you'd like to respond to them. Sure. Um, through you, Mr. Chair, um, to kind of reiterate what my initial comments were. So as it relates to access, um, as you can see through the comments, city staff have agreed to lift that, uh, one, that one foot reserve along the width of the driveway fronting onto Bayview. So that resolves that. Um, there was uh, a comment about um, how this is impacting the neighbor's front yard. I'm not really sure how that's possible. Um, not only is this not her front yard, it's not really her property. So the third comment was uh, about forestry. Again, I think she was working off of a slightly outdated tree preservation plan. Um, her, her stats that she had um, cited were, were slightly off and I had just provided um, the um, committee uh, through uh, member Kidd, um, the, the, the most up-to-date uh, tree replacement um, agreement that forestry has, has agreed to. Lastly was the question about more units, and this circles back to the previous uh, C-Lab decision. Again, as I said, the, the applicant is committed to seeking approval and constructing what is in front of us all on the screen right now. Can, can an applicant submit for townhouses on a lot? Of course they could but they would have to go through a fulsome zoning review and have to justify the, the, the development. So it doesn't make any sense for an applicant to go through all this process and spend the time and money to get this approval, just to have to go back to zoning and change it again. So um, by that logic, I, you know, my client could apply for a 50 story building here. doesn't mean he's going to get it. doesn't mean that it's appropriate. So um, in terms of whether a site can accommodate more units, any site in the city can accommodate more units, but that's not what we've applied for. That's not what the owner is seeking. What the owner is seeking is in, full, in, in front of the committee. And again, the only variance, the only reason we're actually here is really to recognize the existing frontage along Wilkett Road. The new lot, lot A, will not even be noticeable to the existing neighborhood. Um, it'll be... Nothing will change along the Wilkett Road frontage because Lot B maintains 100% of its frontage on Wilkett Road. So from a planning perspective, this new lot will have absolutely no impact on the surrounding area. Okay, thank you, sir. Does the committee have any questions of the speaker? Mr. Chair? Yes. We'll let this question go first, but I do want to bring your attention that Michael Kara uh, is on the call now, so we can talk to him in a second, but maybe we'll let Mr. Hunt... Okay, uh, uh, Yes, Mr. Hunt, you had a question? Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, in the comments that we've just listened to, uh, I just want to make sure that I understood uh, the accuracy. Is it true that the, uh, the applicants have begun to remove trees uh, prior to any approval to do so? Uh, through you, Mr. Chair, uh, not not to my knowledge. Um, I don't know if those ten trees, were, the removal of those ten trees, was associated with the previous application. I'm not clear about that comment um, at all. Uh, to my knowledge, uh, nothing has been removed, and we've worked closely with forestry staff to to come to a solution that they were satisfied with. So, to my knowledge, that is not the case. I wonder if that was maybe associated with the previous application. I, I, I cannot confirm. Okay, thank you. Okay. Uh, I understand we have one of our deputants is, is on the line now. I'm sorry, we'll have to go back and, and hear their comments. Uh, Michael Kara, are you there? Hear me. Yes, Mr. Kara, uh, can I get your full name and address, please? Yes, sir. My name is Michael Kara, last name C A R A. Uh, I'm a lawyer at Overland LLP, and I'm appearing as legal counsel on behalf of three owners, Ms. Jenny Vincent. Ms. Margaret Cohen, and Ms. Zara Haslow. And for your information, the addresses are 36 Wilkett, 35 Wilkett, uh, 2533 Bayview Avenue. 
And, okay. and sir, I, I would just like to note, I've, I've been on the call for the, the entirety of the morning. I, I believe my name was referred to as Kara with a K, which may be the reason why I was not unmuted. That's fine. Please proceed. Thank you, sir. Uh, so as mentioned, I'm legal counsel for three of the adjacent landowners. Uh, sir, our, our office has been involved in a number of proceedings related to the subject sites in the past, including the applications for severance and minor variances that the same owner advanced in 2019. Uh, those applications were, were refused by the committee in the first instance, and again by the T-Lab when the owner appealed the refusal. Uh, the reason I note this background information for you is because those applications were virtually identical to what is before you today. Although the current plans for the North Lot have been modified slightly, the proposal is still ultimately predicated on a severance that is specifically prohibited by the bylaw for the reason that it would create a new lot being the North Lot that has no frontage onto any street. Now, putting aside the question of whether the applications represent an abuse of process, the proposal before you today this morning cannot be characterized as an ordinary application for consent. The applicant is taking an existing lot in the neighborhood, severing it in half, essentially flipping it around in the opposite direction and imposing on it a new use that is not permitted under the prevailing zoning bylaw. If approved, the North conveyed lot would be landlocked and without frontage onto Bayview Avenue or Wilkett Avenue, while the South retained lot would be significantly undersized in relation to typical lots in the Wilkett Road community where the average size of a lot is approximately 1,750 square meters. As is clearly set out in the excerpt from the T-Lab decision that was included in our letter, one of the primary reasons why the severance application was refused by the T-Lab during our participation is the existence of a one foot reserve between the North Lot and Bayview Avenue. To use the exact words of the T-Lab member, the bylaw specifically prohibits development on lots subject to such a reserve and it is inappropriate to approve variances for a dwelling on a lot which is not or cannot be created. This one foot reserve was put into place by the city as a means of ensuring that new developments along this stretch of Bayview Avenue gain access from abutting local side streets, as opposed to introducing additional driveways directly off an arterial road that is particularly busy during peak traffic hours. As such, this is not just about lot fabric, but also overarching policy objectives that are rooted in traffic safety. In addition to the numerous levels of letters of objection that were filed by their neighbors and the counselor's office, the, report, the reports issued by engineering services and transportation staff emphasize this concern as well. Both re reports confirm that the subject lands are not free and clear of encumbrances and make clear that the current driveway configuration is not feasible and should not be approved by the committee. Uh, I would like to take a minute to clarify some of the comments made by Mr. Perry this morning. Both reports by engineering staff and transportation staff state that they would not object to object to the applications if the applicant were to make a significant number of modifications to the lot configuration and driveway access. But as noted this morning, the applicant has no intention of making those changes that were recommended by staff. He also suggested that engineering services and transportation staff have already agreed to lift the reserve. This statement is problematic for two reasons. Firstly, simply put, that is not, that's not what is stated in this, both of these reports. And secondly, as a matter of law, they do not have the jurisdiction to do so, as that is a matter that would have to be considered by council following the submission of a number of reports. Uh, the simple fact of the matter is that reserve is not lifted. In order to satisfy the test so under Section 51 of the Planning Act, the applicant assumes the obligation to demonstrate how the proposal conforms with the official plan. Section 417 directs the proposals for identification of lands that are oriented towards major streets such as Bayview Avenue in areas that are designated neighborhoods are not encouraged. The policy direction is also supported by section 415, which states that development in established neighborhoods must respect and reinforce the existing physical character of the area, including the prevailing pattern of rear and side yard setbacks. However, the introduction of these lots would interrupt the prevailing pattern of rear and side yard setbacks, particularly when you look at the new relationship between the north lot and our client's property at 35 Wilkett Road to the immediate east. The proposals also predicate on the removal of 20 mature trees that currently exist on the site, contrary to section 312 of the official plan. This number is not consistent with Mr. Pereira's comments this morning, which based on his submissions must be based on reports and emails that may be in his inbox, but are nowhere on the public record. Uh, despite the direction containing these OP policies, each of which were considered at length by the T-Lab during the previous hearing, the applicant has not elected to address any of these ongoing issues. Uh, the proposed lot frontage also fails to satisfy a test under section 45 one of the planning act 
Although the lot frontage reflects an existing condition, the current lot is of sufficient size to compensate for the fact that it is a less than required frontage. In contrast, if the applications were approved, uh, the deficient lot frontage would be coupled with a significantly smaller south lot that is about half the size of the existing lot. As such, although the proposed lot frontage reflects an existing condition, due to the severance, I would submit that we are not dealing with an apples to apples comparison. Uh, as a concluding statement, based on the foregoing, it's my submission that these applications for consent and minor variances do not comply with section 45 or 51 of the Planning Act, and that they do not maintain the intent and purpose of the official plan or zoning bylaw. Okay, thank you, sir. Reinforce you. Thank you, sir. Does thank the you. committee have any subject to any questions? Those are my submissions. Thank you. Does the committee have any questions of the speaker? No, I just wanted to ask, sir, are, are, are you made an issue about the foot reserve and access to Bayview. Are there properties along this section of Bayview that have access to that street? Uh, sir, it's a, it's a general city policy that along the stretch of Bayview, there'd be no new access onto Bayview Avenue. There, no, there may be I'm, some that's not what I'm asking. Are, 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 are there properties along this section of Bayview Avenue that have direct vehicle access to that arterial street? No new development, sir. Not new, I said existing. As I was going to say, for example, Ms. Haslow has a house that was built long before the one foot okay, reserve. No, that, what I'm saying is, what I'm, what I'm suggesting, sir, is that access to Bayview Avenue along this section is not unusual, is it? Uh, I, I disagree, sir. Okay. You have instances where historical sites may, but all new developments do not have access because by law they cannot do the reserve. Does the property yeah, immediately does the property immediately to the north have access to Bayview Avenue? Uh, the prop to 25, the north of Bayview 2533 Bayview, does it have access to Bayview? Yes, Ms. Haslow's property okay, does because you. it was prior to the one foot okay. reserve being put into place. Thank you. Uh, does the committee have any further questions of the speaker? There being none, could I get a motion on this application, please? Mr. Kidd? Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, it, it, there, there seems to be two two main concerns uh, with this application. One, one with the trees, with regard to the trees, and uh, the fact that we uh, uh, we don't have a report from uh, 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 Forestry Department uh, it seems to indicate that they don't have a problem with uh, the application. The other uh, problem seems to be the uh, the one foot reserve uh, with access to Bayview, and I, I, I'm just looking at the. Uh, the uh, engineering and transportation report um, where they mentioned that uh, they have no objection to the subject uh, consent and uh, minor variance application subject to the following conditions and one of the uh, one of the conditions is that the uh, one foot uh, reserve the 0 0.3 meter reserve is to be lifted uh, so I, I, I feel comfortable going ahead with that uh, if, if they can't lift the one foot reserve then the uh, uh, the uh, application w uh, will not proceed, but um, on the basis of that, I'd like to put forward uh, a motion to accept the, uh, uh, the the consent and minor variance application. It would be subject to the uh, conditions set out in the um, uh, transportation engineering construction services transportation uh, report dated uh, January the 25th and um, That, that that's that's the only one that think, had I conditions, Mr. I think that's all. Yes, that that's my uh, 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 motion. Okay, thank you, Mr. Kidd. I've uh, uh, Miss Sankar seconds. All those in favor? Opposed? Mr. Hunt and Mr. Khan opposed. Uh, all, all support Mr. Kidd's motion, so that motion carries, and that application is approved subject, subject to development engineering conditions. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, we'll on to our next application, which is... Mr. Chair, um, I have uh, an update regarding the first consent. 
Okay, we'll go back to item number one, which and is... And before over that, I'd like to bring to your attention as well, I have a late request for deferral as well. Do you want to do a deferral first right off the bat? Uh, let's do the deferral. Which one is that? Okay, one? so the new deferral request is for... Um, I think it's for item number 20. Oh, yeah, it's for item number 21, which is the last item of the AM session. Okay, let me just find Item it. number 21 is A0897 slash 21 NY, uh, 2284 Glencairn Avenue. Okay, we'll just we'll jump ahead to that. We have a deferral request for item number 21, 284 Glencairn Avenue. Thank you, Mr. Wills. Um, I have the agent, Mr. David Eigelman, I-G-E-L-M-A-N. Are you there, sir? Yes, good morning, Mr. Chair and committee members. Yes, thank you, sir. Uh, can I get your full name and address, please? Mr. Eigelman? Mr. Chair and members, uh, for some reason, David uh, was muted. Uh, I am back. Okay, hello. Can I get your full name and address, please? Yes, through you, Mr. Chair, David Eagleman, 900 Suite 300. Okay, thank you, sir. I just Before you start, I just wanted to ask, there was a report on file with your application from City Planning dated the 1st of March. They were recommending that you reduce variance number two regarding the pro proposed building length from 18... 0.98 meters to 18.52 meters or less. Uh, they indicate that you had agreed to that change, but I understand you still would like to defer your application. Yes, through you, Mr. Chair, uh, we would like to request a deferral of the application in order to allow for more time to obtain a zoning notice uh, to match a revised set of plans that would reflect that change that uh, planning staff have recommended. Okay, thank you. Uh, I note that there are not, uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight persons registered to speak on this application. So I'm going to uh, ask what they think about that deferral. But before we do that, uh, does the committee have any questions of the speaker? There being none, I'll go to uh, next person on our list. I have a Brendan, Brenda McNeeson, M-A-C-K-N-E-S-O-N. Are you there? Yes, I am. Yes, can I get your full name and address, please? My name is Brenda McNeeson of 450 St. Clair Avenue East in Toronto. Okay, thank you, madam. Uh, do you have an objection to the, uh, to the applicant's request for a deferral? No, I welcome the request for a deferral, but I would like it to be registered that many, many people have uh, spent the last two weeks speaking, writing letters, um, voicing objections to a proposal when there was no zoning review included in this application. And I think as a point of principle, that's just bad policy because it's led to a lot of confusion. Okay, thank you, madam. But in uh, you have no objection to the deferral then? Thank you. No objection. Okay, does the committee have any questions of the speaker? Go to the next person on the list, Emma Gordon Henderson. Are you there? Uh, and I have no objection. You have no objection? Thank you, sir. Does the committee have any questions of the speaker? Being none, thank you. Go to the next person on the list, Dr. Gerald Rosenstein. Are you there? Gerald Rosenstein, are you there? I got to say, I got to go. Mr. Rosenstein, are you there? I'm going to the next person on the list. No. Mr. Chair, they are present oh. on the call. Mr. Rosenstein, can you hear us? Mr. Rosenstein, please stop unmuting and muting yourself. Let staff control that ability. Hi. Mr. Rosenstein, are you there? Yes, I am. Do you have an Can objection you to the applicant's request for a deferral? 
Well, uh, being as I'm a physician, a very busy kidney specialist, I've been sitting on the call for an hour and a half now. Um, and I have another meeting in five minutes. I guess I don't have sure, any sir. Uh, objection. Sir, do I'm you have an objection? Do you have an objection to the deferral? Yes no, or no? No objection. Okay, thank you. No. Thank you. Any questions of the speaker? Uh, next person on the list, a Paulina Colmone. Are you there? Paulina Colmone. Mr. Chair, they are present on the call at this time, but they have not authorized the use of their microphone, so I cannot unmute them. Okay. Paulina, if you want to log out and log back in very quickly, make sure you authorize your microphone if you'd like to speak. Okay, thank you. I'll go to the next person on the list. John or Susan Kingdom, are you there? Mr. Chair, we have John unmuted currently. Okay, John Kingdom, are you there? Yes, I am John Kingdom. Um, I'm the co-owner of the property immediately to the east at 282 Glencairn Avenue. I do accept the deferral, but I wish the committee to see the extent of concerns around this home and the multiple uh, concerns sir, regarding sir, the Sir, sir, sir. Are you, are you in favor of a deferral or not? Yes or no? Yes. Okay, thank you. Does the committee have any questions of the speaker? Next person on the list, the Joan Eakin, E-A-K-I-N. Are you there? Joan Eakin, are you there? Can and I live at 283 Glencairn uh, Avenue across the street, and I agree to the deferral. Thank you very much, madam. Does the committee have any questions of the speaker? Being none, I'll go to the next person on the list. I have a Linda Brager, Brager, B-R-A-G-E-R, or Mark Breger, B-R-A-G-E-R. Are you there? Mr. Chair, it looks like we have Mark on the line. Hello, sir. This is Mark Breger. I do not object to the deferral. Thank you very much, sir. Does the committee have any questions of the speaker? There being none, I'll go back to uh, next person on the list, Mary O'Rourdan, O-R-I-O-R-D-A-N. Are you there? Mr. Chair and members, Mary is not on the call at this time. Okay, thank you. Uh, Mr. That's... Chair, we do, let me make sure they're on the call. We did have a very late register by the name of Jeff Bonham, um, but it appears he's not on the call at this time. Okay, thank you. Uh, no other persons registered to speak. I'll go back to the, uh, we'll go back to the agent then. Uh, can I get a motion on the deferral, please? Ms. Sankar? Thank you, Mr. Chair, I'll motion to defer this application, sign me by, give the, the applicant a chance to work with planning and get the zoning uh, corrected for this application. Okay, thank you. Someone to second Ms. Sankar's motion? Mr. Hunt seconds. All those in favor? That motion carries unanimously. Sir, your application has been deferred so that you can revise your application. I also strongly suggest that you meet with the uh, affected neighborhood as well. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, we'll go uh, back to item number one. That's uh, 60 to 64 Roselawn Avenue. I have three people registered to speak, and the agent is Ty Ryuk, R-Y-U-C-K. Are you there? Good morning, sir. It's Tay Rook, planner for the owners of the property. Yes, thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Can I get your full name and address, please? Sure. It's Tay Rook. Planner for the owners of the property at 6064 Roselawn. I'm at 18 Young Street. Thank you, sir. I just wanted to ask before you start, I've uh, noticed there are a couple of uh, number of comments or staff reports registered with your application. There is a report from Urban Forestry which uh, recommended a refusal of the consents, uh, 
specifically B12, 21 NY and B13, 21 NY, as well as uh, there were, if it's approved, conditions to all the, cons to, to all the consents. Uh, city planning had, in their report of the 25th of February, has no objections to your application subject to standard conditions. Development engineering, in their report of the 24th of January, had no objection uh, subject to standard consent conditions. And there's a report from Heritage Planning dated the 12th of July uh, of 2021. They had no objections subject to you retaining a consulting archaeologist to undertake work on the properties. Uh, have you had the opportunity to read those reports, sir? I have, sir. And uh, we don't have any issues with the standard conditions that were applied by planning, transportation, or forestry or heritage. Okay, thank you very much. If you'd like to give the uh, committee a presentation on what you see as the merits of your proposal. Sure, sir. Um, I had submitted supporting documents or supporting, supporting materials to uh, as presentation slides. And the variance is uh, the proposal before you is to sever the existing two lots or consolidation of two lots of 60 and 64 Roselawn Avenue. Currently on these two properties is two single detached homes. There is a former candy factory at the rear of 60 Roselawn and also a garage along um, at the rear of 60 Roselawn as well. So there's four structures on this property altogether. The proposal is to construct five single detached dwellings uh, on this pro consolidated property having access and frontage along Duplex Avenue. And what you see on the map before you are pro uh, properties that have been highlighted in purple that have lost frontages less than 7.5 meters in terms of lot frontage. You'll also note that only lots C and D of the proposal require frontage variance at 7.2 meters or 30 centimeters in terms of the variance. All the three remaining lots comply with the lot frontage. You'll also note that there's uh, green diamonds that have been identified on the plan as well. Those represent uh, sites in the area that have less than the 225 square meter lot area and those are found you'll note that they're found primarily along the frontages along duplex avenue and this is somewhat characteristic of this neighborhood it's a very tightly knit neighborhood it's very eclectic in terms of uses in terms of uh, the types of dwellings that are found along duplex along roselawn along castlefield interior to the to the site as well if you go to the next map it's another context map which shows FSIs in the areas of greater than one times FSI. Uh, you'll also note that there's blue dots that have been located on the maps as well that show rear yard setbacks that are less than 7.5 meters in, in, in terms of distance. And what you find is, is that directly across the, stripe, uh, across the street from the subject site at 50, 589, sorry, 539, 541, 543, uh, those are very similar in terms of massing and structure in terms of what we're looking to do on this property in terms of having single detached homes fronting onto Duplex Avenue. You'll note in the pictures as you go through them in the next few slides is that you'll note you'll see the two detached dwellings that are fronting on to Roseon at 60 and 64 and they're indicated by arrows. You'll note that, that there's three structures on 60 Roseon that front onto Duplex. And the next picture, the third picture represents the single detached homes that are directly across the street and which we're trying to mirror on our property as well. But what, as I indicated earlier, in terms of Roselaw, in terms of the neighborhood itself, as you go through the pictures, what you find is very eclectic types of uh, dwelling types in terms of single uh, townhouses, walk-up apartments, townhouses along Roselaw. You'll also note that there's walk-up apartments and new proposals for condominiums along Duplex Avenue, just south of the street, walk-up three-story walk-up apartments. And when you go into the interior of the site as well, along Castlefield, you'll see various houses in terms of semis, singles, walk-up apartments of varying heights and different architectural styles that are found. And you'll see some buildings are taller and shorter than the others, and they're all located adjacent to each other. What you see on the next plan is a site plan which indicates that these buildings itself are itself in terms of massing and the way it's been deployed on the property. Majority of the four of the buildings, B, C, D, and E are 13.42 meters in length and A being 14.1. And this is done intentionally to ensure that we provide enough buffering and distances between the rear of the properties. 
You'll note that there's the dotted lines that are showing the existing structures along within the property itself. And you'll see that the 60, 60 rows lawn, 64 rows on, is adjacent to, located very close to the property to the rear, uh, to the south, to, pardon me, to the west at 68. And what we've done is pull these buildings back. There's an FSI and in terms of height variances as well. You'll note that there on the next slide, there's a areas that have been highlighted in green. And for some reason on the zoning review and the zoning examiner, included these rooftop mechanic included mechanical rooms as part of the FSI and you'll see in this small table there if you eliminate these uh, eliminate these areas which you traditionally do you end up with a lower FSI number but with the same massing the next slide shows the, the extent of the height encroachments along the along the top there's a nine meter mark and what's encompassing the various height variances is the various parapets and mechanical rooms and certain elements of the third story that are being caught within the above the nine meter mark. And you'll see it very clearly along the next few slides and a lot also on the uh, elevations, the renderings that have been done. For sir, can you summarize, please? Sure, I will, sir. And you'll see that these those elements are various parapets and various architectural features that add character to the neighborhood. You'll also note that a shadow study was done in the various last three slides of the proposal which showed that the shadow impacts uh, along this uh, for this proposal at nine o'clock, one o'clock and 5 p.m. are minimal if non-existing to the adjacent neighbor towards the west. This is a meritorious application. We do have the supported planning staff and no concerns with regards to other departments with the exception of the trees, which I can get into. And I'm sure there's gonna be questions about sir, that. Sir, can you finish please? Can. I'm done, sir. I apologize. Okay, thank you. Does the committee have any questions of the speakers? As a speaker, there being none, I'll go to the next person on the list. I have a Bonnie Smith. Mr. Chair and members, Bonnie Smith is present on the call at this time, but she has not authorized the use of her microphone. Therefore, I cannot unmute her. Bonnie, if you can hear me, please log out and log back in and make sure you authorize the use of her microphone so you're able to speak at the meeting today. Okay, thank you. Uh, we'll come back to Ms. Smith. Uh, I have, next person is a Joanna Malley, M-A-L-L-E-Y. Are you there? Yes, I am. Can you hear me, Speaker? Yes, can I get your full name and address, please? Absolutely. My name is Joanna Malley. I am the owner and resident of 39 Castlefield Avenue. Okay, thank you. If you'd like to uh, give us your thoughts on this application. Sure. I would just like to point out to all of the members of the committee that the the paperwork that was sent to the, the residents in the adjoining area was incorrect. I did send an email to this regard, so we were not given the proper paperwork to review this. It was also duplicated, and when speaking to many of the members of the community, they said they didn't open the 28 envelopes per owner that was sent to each of the people required. So I am requesting a deferral. I did request that prior to, so that um, so that everybody in the neighborhood would have the proper paperwork to review. However, if that's not on the table, um, I am prepared to uh, to talk about our concerns about the proposal. Would you like me to do that? Well, I'll just ask uh, our, Mr. Wills. Is there an, an there wasn't was there an issue with the, the notices? Uh, Mr. Chair, unfortunately, I was not the application technician responsible for a file. Um, 6064 um, Roselong uh, Ave, but maybe Simon can say something Mr. to it. Lamb? Mr. Chair, I'm not aware of any issue of the notice. Uh, notice is given to every, to every registered owner. If there's two Even people in there, you will... Madam, each, madam, let Mr. Lamb finish. You will each receive one because we're not sure if each registered owner lives in the house. If one registered owner has moved out, they are still entitled to notice. That's why every registered owner on the property deed receives a notice. Okay, thank you. That is, that's not what I'm arguing. What I argued is the okay, notice that we madam, received. Madam, madam, you've, you've, you've heard. So uh, if, you'd, if you'd like to make your, uh, make your comments sure. on the application. Yep, go right ahead. Uh, so our, our major concern is the height of the buildings and the proximity to the lot lines. Also, the micro lots is what we're calling them that, that are being created are, are, not, are not appropriate for the neighborhood. I appreciate that the neighborhood is eclectic, and we like that the neighborhood is eclectic and has semi-detached and detached homes. We're not suggesting that this is a this has to be ripped down and built in its exact form. Um, we welcome new um, development or new 
housing on these two particular lots. However, the that five is egregious. It, it's purely um, it, it's purely a, a, a money play, if you will, for the owner. The owner does not live anywhere near this development, so will not be impacted by this and is only looking to his own pockets. I appreciate that five lots would sell for more money than maybe three, as an example. Um, I, I face my backyard faces directly into this, as do a number of our neighbors. We are going to look at a wall that is what is the request? The request is. 10.6 meters, which is a full 12 feet higher than is allowed. So that's what our backyard is going to look into. We all have young children, particularly in the last two years, we have used our backyards incredibly heavily. This is going to impact our way of life. It's going to remove the trees that we look at in our backyards. And it's also going to create five properties that have virtually no outdoor space. Given what we've just lived through in the last two years, that's inappropriate. This is a neighborhood where people have backyards and they move into the neighborhood specifically to use these backyards and have outdoor space. So what they are proposing will not create that and is not appropriate. So we don't have a problem with the look of it. That's not the issue. We also have a problem with the rooftop balconies. It, there are not rooftop balconies in the neighborhood. This is not somewhere we where we expect people to lord over the use of our private outdoor space. So we would like those whatever the plan moving forward is, we would like those removed from a smaller number of units that are being put on this property. Um, we have concern with drainage. This is going to create two lots that are going to have nowhere to drain already. That's a problem in our issue. We, in our area, we know we have flooding whenever there's heavy rain. Madam, so madam, going to increase. Just, uh, and, yes? and again, I, madam, before you proceed, just note that the committee yes? does not deal with drainage issues. If you note in the okay. uh, if if you note in the development engineering report, there's an, uh, a clause in there that the de that the developer has to provide a lot grading plan that shows that his storm water is managed on his own property. So that's a requirement mm -hmm. of the consent and a requirement of the building permit application process. Okay. Um in reading through all of this paper, if it was sent to us, it sort of says here that the, this is brought to Committee of Adjustment, assuming that the variance required, requested is minor. While individually these variances may be minor, we would argue that looking at the, the, um, the, the addition of all of them together is not a minor variance. This is a lot severance as well as, as variances for five individual properties. We also look and say here, that, you know, you request that the proposal is desirable and appropriate for the development use and or land of the, the building. We are arguing that it is not. It is not appropriate to be divided into five lots. While we appreciate that density is important, especially in Midtown where things are growing, this is too dense. That, that, is, that is our concern. So the major concerns, as I said, are, um, in, are lot coverage, height in particular, rooftop patios and trees, also the driveways onto duplex. This is going to create five driveways, which are very short, onto a very busy street. So not only is it going to be difficult for the neighbors, for our children to ride their scooters and their bikes, because it's now five driveways on this property, it's going to be very difficult for these potential residents to get out of their driveways. Because the traffic in the area is so heavy, it, they're going to have a hard time. This is going to be a danger for the area. Thank okay. You. Thank you, Madam. Does the committee have any questions mm -hmm. of the speaker? Being none, I'll go back to our next person on the list, Bonnie Smith. Are you there? I'm doing is setting up a meeting with the. Bonnie Smith, are you there? Mr. Chair and members, uh, Bonnie Smith is on the call still, but she has not authorized the use of her microphone, so I cannot unmute her. It should be noted too when I requested that she log out and log back in. I tried to keep an eye, and I couldn't, didn't notice okay. that she logged out and logged back in. What, what I'll do, uh, Mr. Wills, I'll set this one down. We'll come back. Um, I don't know. Uh, Ms. Smith, are you there? Mr. Chair, again, like I said, they are present, but I cannot unmute them. They did not authorize the use of their microphone when they originally logged in. Well, if, if we can't access, then I, have, I don't have any choice. We'll have to, we'll have to, uh, we'll just have to, uh, won't be able to. We are not able to contact Ms. Smith, so we have no other speakers. I'll go back to the agent. Are you there, sir? Mr. Rook, are you there? 
Yes, sir. I just got unmuted. Yes, I'm here. Yes, hello, sir. Uh, if you'd like to, uh, you've heard the comments from Ms. Malley. If you'd like to respond to them, please. Sure. Um, I think it's pretty clear in terms of height and massing in terms of uh, this proposal. Um, originally, just to give you some context, and it was mentioned in the planning staff report, originally this proposal was for six units, and there were three sets of semi-detached dwellings that were originally proposed on the site. After speaking with the planning department and here listening to their concerns, it was deemed more acceptable to provide for five dwelling units, single detached dwelling units. In terms of massing itself, you'll note that there's no side yard setback variances that are being proposed. So it's not, this proposal is not looking to squeeze in these five dwellings in terms of, in terms of frontages along this property. What it does is, is reflects and mirrors what's ex occurring and is already existing within along Duplex Avenue directly across the street, up north and south of Duplex Avenue as well. In terms of height, you'll note that there was a shadow study done uh, for this proposal and it's included in my materials as part of my presentation slides. And what you see is, is that in the more, it, the shadows that have been, that it would be casted upon the adjacent property, which would be 68, Roseland, which is to the west, is minimal and it would be reflective, it was actually would be better than what's currently existing there right now. You'll note that in midday of the midday at one o'clock, there's virtually no shadows onto adjacent properties. And in the evening at 6, 5 p.m., the shadow casts towards Duplex Avenue. So as a result of that, this proposal, like I said, the height variances are limited to various aspects of the architectural features of this building in terms of the rooftop mechanicals, parapets, railings that are associated with the height of the dwelling. But you'll also note what the proposal has done in terms of the way it presents to the street um, in terms of driveway access points towards duplex is one in which that is supported by transportation staff, by, uh, by transportation services. And Driveways along Duplex Avenue is more than consistent with what's existing there today. Directly across the street are driveways onto Duplex. Down the street, from north and south of the property, there's driveways onto Duplex. So this is characteristic and something that is acceptable from a transportation perspective and safety perspective as deemed by, by the city staff. The other aspects of the, of the concerns that was raised was the these are not micro lots as it was characterized by the neighbors. Um, I would submit to you that there are similar lot frontages as shown in the maps and also similar lot areas with similar rear yard setbacks that are being proposed on this property as, as shown on the area context maps that have been submitted to you. They're primarily found along the north south streets along Duplex and Eden Drive. And this is something that is normal and characteristics of this area in terms of the collective nature and tightly knit character of this neighborhood. With regards to the uh, to also the rooftop balconies, there are no variances related to the rooftop balconies for this proposal. And we have and what I have been authorized to do if it seems if it's deemed appropriate for the committee and it seems satisfactory. We can eliminate the rear decks at the along at the rear of the pro, of this houses, although they're not variances. Um, and we're more than happy to do that to appease the neighbors because we do want this to be something of a character of a, of a property that is iconic within the neighborhood that that wraps sir, the corner. That makes sir, if you want, interest to the corner. sir, if you want to make yes, changes, if you want to make changes to your application or or an, a, a revision. You have to suggest yes. that. We're not going to tell you what revision to make. Understood. If you want to make and a revision, would... sir, that's up to you. Yes, the committee's sir. not and going to tell you. That. I understand. And I will restate that. We will eliminate the rear decks for A, B, C, and D uh, on the third story. We have no issues with that. But we also believe that the decks that front onto duplex is a character that is a, uh, that would be that would enhance the streetscape along duplex because it provides eyes in the street and provides for more architectural feature and character along the street as well. You'll also note that unit A has been designed in a way where access is provided along in terms of a driveway, the access is provided along duplex similar to across street and for units B, C, D, and E. And the care and the building on the side elevation of the building that faces onto the road. Sir, can you summarize, please? 
provides us windows and doors and character towards the street. Those are my submissions. I'm more than happy to answer any questions. This is a meritorious application and warrants a supportive committee. Okay, thank you. So, uh, sir, are you proposing to remove the decks from the rear yard? Yes, sir. Okay, so does, does that affect any of your variances? No, it does not. It wasn't even a variance to begin with, but having after hearing the neighbors, we're willing to remove the decks at the rear. Okay, so you, you, you've, st you've stated on the public record that you're going to remove those decks, so, so now you're committed to it. Yes, sir. Okay, thank you. Does the committee have any questions of the speaker? Mr. Kidd? Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, I, I noticed the um, uh, Forestry Department report uh, recommends denying uh, the application because of the removal of uh, uh, some of the trees out there. Could you comment on that uh, report, please? Yes, sir. Uh, we did submit an arborist report and these, these the trees that are in question are trees 15, 17, which are street trees, city trees, and four and five, which are private trees or walnut trees. And our report and our arborist report indicates that these trees are deemed available for removal as they are in poor health and in, are recommended for removal. Forestry has taken the position that they have to stick to the black and white letter of their bylaws and that there is no flexibility in terms of doing a further investigation into these trees to deem, to concur or to ensure that these trees can be removed. But also what you'll note at the same time, a landscape plan has been submitted for this proposal. And you'll note that there's replacement trees that are being proposed all along the uh, surrounding the properties. There's 16 new trees that would be replaced or placed on this property to accommodate for additional buffering and to soften the edges along the rose lawn and duplex frontages. So with that in mind, we believe that the proposal itself is more than consistent and in terms it provides for a greener prop, greener edge at the end of the day, once these trees do grow in, they will be of a hardy material or a hardy, hardy species that will survive the winters and also the road conditions in the area. You'll also note that the removal of the certain private trees, specifically four and five, they're located adjacent to the existing rear garage along 64. And what this proposal is doing is mimicking the footprint of that rear garage uh, along that edge. So we're no closer or further away from the existing trees uh, at four or five, but we do. And what at the end of the day, it will still need to be removed because they are in poor health and one day it will come down. Okay, thank you. Does the committee have any further questions of the speaker? Ms. Sankar? Yes, I just wanted to hear one last time from the agent in terms of the uh, character of the neighborhood and why um, does he feel that this actually meets the character? Uh, yes, ma'am. The you know, It's actually very easily characterized by the pictures that I had submitted. You'll see along the Rose, along the Rose Lawn, just down the street from the subject site, across the street from the subject site on Rose Lawn uh, is townhouses that front right onto our property. Just down the street along the south side of uh, Rose Lawn as well, there's townhouses that were approved uh, along that side. But also at the same time, directly across the street are similar uh, single detached homes with similar frontages, similar rear yard setbacks and also similar height and massing that is also existing on that on the opposite corner of the site. If you go through the neighborhood itself, mid block, where you, where you traditionally find walk up apartments or townhouses, more denser type of uh, dwelling types, you traditionally find them on the edge of the neighborhood. But in this neighborhood, you find them in the middle of the neighborhood, mid block, uh, midway through along Castlefield and Roselawn as well. And what we've done in terms of this proposal is to reorientate the houses towards duplex because the duplex character is more dense and more eclectic in terms of types of uses that are being provided and provide streetscape along that edge. And we believe that this is a more reflective pattern of development that exists in the area and it's a character that we're trying to enhance and to uh, appropriate onto with regards to the streetscape landscape. Okay, thank you. Does the committee have any further questions of the speaker? There being none, could I get a motion on this application, please? Ms. Sankar? 
Yes, through you, Mr. Chair, you know, I've listened really clear, carefully to what the agent has had to say and going through um, the multitudes of explanations. And, and I do, uh, I have respectfully heard um, what the debutants have also said, but I do feel that the explanations provided by the agent here today does sit well with me. Um, and for that reason, um, I'd like to put forward a motion to um, approve um, uh, the consent to sever. Do, do you want me to do it in parts or just all together to consent to sever and um, approval of all the parts of the, uh, this um, yeah, property? Uh, that would probably be preferable. Just split it up between the consents and the variances. Right, so um, motion to um, to a uh, motion to consent to sever um, each property um, from 60 and 64 Rose Lawn Avenue, and then the five um, undersized parts. Um, a motion to to um, to continue with with uh, that development. And um, I will make this um, subject to, of course, the standard conditions of the staff report. I'll make it condition and uh, conditional to approval of forestry on all of those parts because forestry does apply for each of the, the conveyed parts. Um, I'll also make it subject to approval of uh, heritage um, and uh, and engineering as well. Yes, That's you've, you've covered it. Thank you very much, Ms. Sankar. Someone to second that motion? Mr. Kidd seconds. All those in favor? Opposed? Mr. Kahn dissenting. That motion carries. Sir, your application has been approved subject to uh, urban forestry, city planning, development engineering, and heritage planning conditions. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, would committee like to take a break for five minutes? Okay, yeah, we'll take a break. We'll come back. My watch is locked. Yeah, I'll go.
Ladies and gentlemen, committee's back in session. We are now on item number three, 191 Golfdale Road. I have Seven people registered to speak. The agent is Ali Shakiri. Are you there? Ali Shakiri, 326 Shepherd Avenue East. Good morning. Yes, hello, sir. sir. Uh, yes, I can hear you. Uh, just wanted to, uh, before you start, I noticed that uh, I'm looking at your application here, looking at your file. There are recommended conditions from urban forestry. There's also a letter from Councillor Robinson dated the 1st of March of this year, and it's recommending that your application be refused. If you could give the uh, committee a presentation on what you see as the merits of your proposal, please. Indeed. Uh, my client, uh, my clients are a family of five. Um, their um, youngest kid is only eight months, and they do need uh, a larger house. Um, by large, I mean um, this this house is only thirty less than thirty five hundred square foot, which is uh, smaller than many of the other houses that uh, we see in town these days. Uh, this case has been before the committee one more time uh, a couple of years ago. Uh, since we have uh, made uh, a lot of changes uh, on this application, first and foremost, uh, the style of uh, the design is changed used to be contemporary, now it's a very um, sensitive design, a Georgian style, as you can see. The uh, FSI is reduced uh, since last time, it's uh, down to 56%. Um, uh, usually the planning does not object uh, anything up to 60%, but uh, we have reduced it further to 56%. Um, we do not have any side yard variance anymore, and uh, the overall building height variant 
it also reduced replaced by a wall height variance which is not controlling the um, overall height of the building it's uh, as i will explain later it will actually um, help us to reduce the building mass if i can uh, have my uh, the first page of my uh, support material displayed the um, building envelope, a table then prescribed by this, uh, by, by the zoning by I cannot see my uh, support material, so I'm not sure if the panel is seeing it. Ali, Ali uh, if I remember correctly, this support material yes. was um, sent in a little later, so we don't have it as access right now, so we'll try and get it up as soon as possible if you want to continue with your presentation. Sure, I, I will send you. So uh, this, this uh, we, we are allowed to have 17 meter uh, long. Um, uh, the, the, the length of the building can be up to 17 meters. It's, it's less than 17 meters. And uh, also the wall height we are asking, if I had my um, support material, it clearly displays uh, that, uh, it demonstrates that uh, by that uh, height variance, so we can reduce the, um, the building mass substantially. We will, um, um, remove the uh, the eavesdrop projections that can be up to uh, uh, three feet or 90 centimeters and uh, um, this basically this variance uh, helps to keep the, the building mass down uh, uh, this is exhibit a as i explained to you that red line is showing the uh, the prescribed table land uh, and uh, you can see the green uh, shaded area is the proposed building if we go to the next page uh, uh, that is uh, those yellow shaded uh, areas uh, uh, will be uh, added uh, to the building mass without asking for any height variance whatsoever. Uh, so the, that, that minor variance that we asked for 7.8 meter um, increasing from 7.5 is actually helping us uh, to, um, to reduce the building mass substantially. Um, if we go to the next exhibit, um, exhibit C, uh, that is um, showing the um, uh, overall uh, image of the neighborhood. There are large buildings. Uh, uh, very cohesive kind of uh, designs and also uh, uh, the modern style is present. We, we decided to, uh, to listen to the neighbors and then uh, change it to a Georgian style. If we go to the, oh, uh, actually the top uh, right, uh, I want to draw the, if, if you go back to the previous page, that building on the top right corner, number 222, has a building height in excess of 12 meters. And uh, the difference of the height of that building with, with, with the one that we're proposing is more than 2.5 meters. It's almost one full story. And uh, we, are, uh, we are basically, uh, I just want to mention that this is not a tall building. If we go to the next exhibit, uh, and actually, actually the, the next page after that, the comparables, uh, I want to just uh, demonstrate here that the um, FSI of up to 60% is approved for, for um, uh, this uh, neighborhood. Also, it, this is the same street, actually. If we go to the next page, um, this is also 60% approved, but I should have highlighted that last uh, line. If you uh, 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 please, uh, I, I want to draw your attention that the wall height of 9.51 meter is approved for this one. I mean, uh, this wall height is uh, usually for uh, the, just better articulation of the of the architectural design. So we do not need that much. We're just asking for a, for a very very minor variance. So I do I do know that I don't have much time left. I just want to mention that uh, this uh, house is a very very sensitive design. We have uh, we have compromised a lot since last time. There is no objection from the planning department, and uh, we uh, accept the condition from the forestry and uh, by. Uh, I uh, think this is a desired um, uh, proposal, and I hope the panel finds it appropriate. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Does the committee have any questions of the speaker? Okay, thank you. We'll go on to the next person on our list. I have Scott Stevens. Are you there? Scott Stevens, are you there? Scott, please don't mute or unmute yourself. Let staff control that. Hi, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Can I get your full name and address, please? Yes, uh, Scott Stevens, 46 Golfdale Road. Okay, thank you. If you'd like to give us your thoughts on this application. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair and members of the committee for uh, having me speak today. I appreciate it. Right. My remarks will be from the perspective of the neighborhood as a whole, and as this application is on Golfdale Road, my perspective is Golfdale Road focused. The TPRA appreciates that the applicant has revised an earlier application, 
um, remove the flat roof and it is using a slope roof, reduce the FSI slightly and eliminate it to one of the side yard setbacks. However, the FSI of 0.56 remains significantly in excess of the FSIs of the two adjacent houses to the east and west side, namely 0.35 and 0.30 FSI respectively. The FSI is still in excess of the prevailing FSIs of the majority of the other houses within the immediate planning area, which is from Golfdale Road east of Mount Pleasant. The main wall height variance and the high rooftop height are excessively higher than the wall and rooftop heights of the two adjacent houses. The length of the sidewalls of this application greatly exceeds those of the two adjacent houses, notwithstanding that that length is as of right, and that causes the negative impacts of the, on the adjacent houses you'll hear about. Uh, per Terry Mills evidence, the application fails to meet the four planning tests per section 415 of the Planning Act. The variances are major, not minor, as you'll hear from a letter submitted by the two adjacent pri property owners on each side and the property owner across the street. Uh, Ten other letters of objection from other residents on the same block. A letter of objection from Jay Robinson's office and planning evidence testimony prepared by Terry Mills, a registered planner. And if you could please put up the graphic that I've at, that I've, is attached to my letter on page three, uh, I'll demonstrate where this FSI that's proposed uh, relates to um, the FSIs uh, of, of the entire block. It would be on the third page of that letter. If you can scroll down to page three, uh, thank you very much. So if you'll I'll draw your attention to the lower graphic and this graphic uh, shows the FSIs of all 46 houses on Golfdale east of Mount Pleasant. Uh, they're divided into clusters of 10 FSI. So the FSI of 0.56 on the application is located along with the four FSIs on the very far right of the graphic. Um, and that is to the right of the cluster that Terry Mills has uh, allocated as being prevailing um, in the range of 0.45 to 55. The FSI of the immediate planning area, the average FSI of the immediate planning area is only 0.379. So we aren't expecting these developments to come in at the average. However, the midpoint of the prevailing cluster is about 0.49. So therefore the TPRA considers an FSI of 0.5 would be prevailing and would be acceptable. The applicant FSI is 0.56 and this is clearly too large. And on that basis, the uh, TPRA requests that the committee refuses the application. Thank you for hearing me. Thank you. Does the committee have any questions of the speaker? There being none, I'll go to the next person on the list. I have a Patrick Cowie. K-O-W-I-E, are Mr. you there? Mr. Chair and members, Patrick is not on the call at this time. Okay, thank you. I'll take him off the list. I have a Mark Cavanaugh, C-A-V-A-N-A-U-G-H. Are you there? Mark Cavanaugh. Yes, I'm here. Yes, can I get your full name and address, please? Yes, <clears throat> it's Mark Cavanaugh at 193 Golfdale Road. Okay, thank you. If you'd like to give us his thoughts on this application. Yes, uh, <clears throat> Mr. Chair, members of the committee, thank you very much for uh, the opportunity to speak to you today. So, uh, <clears throat> Marianne and I live at 193 Golfdale Road, and we're directly adjacent to the proposed development of 191 directly to the east. Um, <clears throat> Dr. Bruce Stewart and Lena Stewart live at 187 Golfdale Road, and they are directly uh, adjacent to the property to the west. Uh, Dr. Stewart was unable to get registered, but he's asked that I speak on his behalf. Hopefully that won't create a problem because it turns out our concerns and objections are completely aligned. Uh, we strongly object to this application and respectfully ask that it be rejected. As has been mentioned by Mr. Stevens, uh, the we object to both variances, the proposed FSI of 0.56% when the maximum allowable amount under the bylaw is 0.35 and the proposed increase in the sidewall height variance to 7.8 from 
uh, to give some perspective on this, members of the committee, the FSI of our home is 0 0.30, okay? The FSI of Dr. Stewart's home is 0.35. A massive structure such as this, a block-like structure with an FSI of 0.56% and a uh, side height uh, of 7.8 meters will dwarf our home and that of Dr. Stewart's and Lena Stewart's. Uh, I will not add uh, much that there's been some comments made by uh, Mr. Mills, the professional planner in a moment. So I will intend to focus uh, largely on the issue of uh, the, the negative impacts on our properties, other than to know Dr. Stewart's comment in his letter. And I think we have a, a mock-up graphic coming to show how much taller this house will be and larger than the adjacent homes. As I said, dwarfing it, as Dr. Stewart put in his letter, this stands out like a sore thumb. It's just a complete outlier. In terms of the negative impacts, and this will apply to both Dr. Stewart and Lena's home, and Mary Ann's and I's, uh, we have extensive flower beds and garden areas that have been developed and nurtured over 31 to 40 years that we've been living here. Um, this is a passion uh, for us and provides us with great enjoyment and satisfaction. The views that we now have looking to the west and east are unobstructed. We see nothing but sky, sunlight, natural light, trees, flowers, and greenery. This is a very special part of living here. This will all be lost if this proposal is accepted. Instead of the beautiful views, unobstructed views we now have, we'll be looking at a massive towering wall extending 25 feet beyond our original home and approximately 13 feet beyond the one, year, uh, one, one story rear addition we have at the back, it's small. This will loom over us, dominate our backyard, destroy our views and garden areas will be lost. In short, it will destroy the use to enjoyment both of us have of our properties. Nothing's been done in, to any material manner to mitigate the damage and negative impacts. A suggestion was made by Mr. Shakiri that there are substantial changes made. This is simply not true or accurate. The, the FSI was reduced from 5.99 to 0.56. It has not changed the negative impacts that will have on, on the adjacent properties at all. Um, <clears throat> this development will have in the adjacent properties. From our perspective, uh, it is though we didn't exist when they, when they developed these plans. No effort was made to mitigate whatsoever. We should add that we are not against at all development. On the contrary, the property to the west of us at 195 Golf Dill Road, that's right, directly to the east of us at 195 Golf Dill Road, is an excellent example of what can be accomplished with a collaborative and truly compromising effort to build a home that does not have a negative impact, let alone a devastating impact on the adjacent properties and fits within the existing neighborhood. We together with our, our um, so many of our neighbors um, in the TPRA, in fact, virtually all the neighbors around us strongly oppose this application. We feel that it is not minor, that it is not desirable for, for the uh, development and use of the land that does not fit the general intent. Sir, can you summarize, please? Bodies. Yes. We, final, just complete, Mr. Chair, by saying we, we, uh, we ask that this application uh, be rejected. We do, not, we do not believe it has merit. Thank you. Thank you. Does the committee have any questions of the speaker? There being none, I'll go to the next person on the list. I have a Terry Mills. Are you there? Mr. Chair and members, Terry Mills is present on the call at this time, but I cannot unmute him. He has not authorized the use of his microphone. Okay. Terry, if you could log out and then log back in and make sure you authorize the use of your microphone, we'll be able to allow you to speak during this meeting. Okay, I'll go to the next person on the list, Suzanne Tyson. Are you there? Ms. Hello, Tyson. can you hear me? Yes, Ms. Tyson. Yes. Can I get your full name and address, please? Sure, Suzanne Tyson at 220 Golfdale Road. Okay, thank you, Madam. If you'd like to give us your thoughts on this application, and I emphasize, Madam, please don't repeat material we've already heard. Okay, sure. Thank you so much for the opportunity to speak. And I'm wondering if, um, Adam, if you would be able to pull up my letter of objection. There are a couple of images of the house that's there now. There we go, thank you so much. 
So the view that we have of 191 is the first image. That's what we see from at least 50% of the rooms in our house. And I can tell you that given COVID working at my uh, dining room table, I've been able to stare out at this house um, incessantly, quite frankly. And the overall uh, impression that, uh, that all of the neighbors, immediate and up and down the street, is that the house being proposed is far too large. You'll see how it dwarfs the two adjacent houses to the east and west in the second image. Um, and there is an uncharacteristically large garage with two, uh, it's a double garage, uh, car garage, which is not prevailing in the community. And I can tell you that the picture that uh, I believe was Mr. Shakiri showed of 222 Golfdale, which is immediately to our east, um, happens to be, have been built by a friend of mine from high school in Winnipeg. And if I had the, the insight that I have now living next to a, a house that large with a wall that extends that far into our backyard, I would have done more at the time to oppose that one. So I am completely um, empathetic to what the, uh, the neighbors on the south side will face. Um, the challenge that we have with this uh, revised plan is it's not different enough than the one that was rejected at COA and the T-Lab, and then again on appeal at T-Lab. And although uh, Arash Kamali did send an email to the neighbors to have a discussion, it was after he had submitted his plans. So there's no sincere interest to collaborate with the neighbors to create something that would be within the prevailing characteristic of the street. And I can tell you that it's not that we don't want a house built. We'd like something that does reflect the, the prevailing characteristics, the size, the density, the massing that exists in the neighborhood. And he said on a couple of occasions that this is his business and he's gonna go all the way. And while we have no objection to him building something that will turn a profit for him, we don't want to, to bear the long-term impacts of a house that's this large. Um, the, to reverse back story, I have a business call coming in. Um, the impact of the sidewalls on either side of our house, not only does it block light, but it blocks um, the uh, airflow in our backyard. And there's an echo, there's an incredible echo that occurs between the, uh, the against the wall of a house that extends beyond your backyard, plus the privacy concerns if there are windows looking into your backyard. Um, so we would like to, to preserve uh, the feel, the look and the feel of the street and we as the immediate neighbors have everything to gain by property values going up. All of our the three houses beside and across have children who have grown and will be moving out of the neighborhood. And we'd like nothing more than the property value to go up, but not at the expense of the streetscape and the feel and the look um, that exists on the street. So we would really appreciate it if you could reject this application. Thank you so much. Thank you. Does the committee have any questions of the speaker? There being none, I'll go to I'll go back to uh, Mr. Mills. Terry Mills, are you there? Mr. Chair, members, Terry is still uh, he's still on the call, but he hasn't authorized the use of his okay, microphone. Thank you. I'll go to the next person on the list. Bruce Campbell, are you there? Bruce Campbell, are you there? Bruce, go can ahead. Can you hear me? Yes, hello, sir. Can I get your uh, full name and address, please? Yes, it's Bruce Campbell, and the address is 237 Golfdale Road. Okay, thank you, sir. If you'd like to give us your thoughts on this application, and I emphasize, sir, please don't repeat material we've already heard. It doesn't advance your case. You understand that, and thank the committee for the We've already reviewed the remarks that we made. The thing I would like to emphasize... Sir, we're having trouble hearing you. Can you speak up? Yes. There, it's better. The thing, I would like to, the thing I would like to emphasize is that the official plan puts a positive obligation uh, on developers to respect and reinforce the characteristics of the neighborhood. And that's particularly to respect and reinforce prevailing heights, massing, prevailing patterns of rear and side yard setbacks. And reinforce means to sustain and strengthen. Respect means to refrain from interfering with. So there's quite a positive obligation here to respect the neighboring impact on neighboring uh, properties. And with Dr. Stewart's and Mr. Cavanaugh's in particular, uh, this is, these, these, 
prevailing patterns of rear and side yard setbacks, prevailing heights and massing, they all produce amenities that are very valuable to each of us in the neighborhood in terms of our enjoyment of all of the amenities of the neighborhood. And that's really the key point I wanna make is that there is a positive obligation to respect and reinforce the characteristics and not to go too deep in comparison to the neighboring lots and not too high in relation to them as well. So that's a short version of a three page submission. Okay, thank you, sir. Uh, does the committee have any questions of the speaker? I'll go back to uh, Mr. Mills, are you there? Mr. Chair, still the same problem. Okay, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna take him off the list then. Okay, we can't access him. I'll go back to the agent. Uh, Mr. Shakiri, are you there? Mr. Chair, Mr. Chair before we uh, go to Mr. Shakiri, I just got an email from uh, Patrick Cowie, who is interested in speaking on this file. So if you don't mind, I'm gonna check out that email real quick. I think then... he's already spoken. No, Patrick was the one we couldn't get a hold of. Oh, okay, I'm sorry, Patrick Cowie, okay. Patrick Cowie, are you there? Yeah, Mr. Chair, there's no one under the name exactly of Patrick Cowie on the call. And uh, the email says they are on the call the entire time and that they logged out and logged back in. Hello, is, is uh, someone there? But I can't find anyone on the list of participants by the name of Patrick Cowie. Now, I, I am going to, oh, Mr. Chair, I, I hit refresh on the list and I, we're going to try them now. Go ahead. Mr. Cowie, yeah. are you there? I oh. am. Can I get your full name and address, please? Sure, Patrick Cowie, 220 Golfdale. Okay, sir, if you'd like to uh, give us your thoughts on this application, but again, please don't re repeat material we've already heard. Yeah, absolutely. So look, uh, just the, uh, the fact of the matter is that the massing of the house is just too large, not in character, creates a bulk on the street, out of proportion and insensitive. And I want to pay particular attention to the garage doors, the double garage doors, which if you look at design and the height of them, reach essentially the second floor windows of the neighboring houses. So uh, really to appreciate what they're doing, I would encourage whoever makes the decision to actually walk Golfdale Road in this area and they get a better understanding. But the garage doors are not typical. And if you pull up my letter, you'll see the original house that was actually built had a single garage with a single driveway. So there was, a, I think, an addition put on this house many years ago. They tried to get a two-car garage and were not allowed. They were allowed the, the wider driveway. Um, we've got 12 letters of objection, no letters of support other than, of course, the proponent, which, which goes to say that uh, it does not meet the, the, the three objectives of the of the official plan. I also want to point out the ceiling heights of 12 feet that they're striving for is really pushing the agenda of the height of the house, which, uh, you know, if they could adjust that, it would go a long way to reducing the bulk of the house. So yes, uh, profit is their motive. Not against, it's not against the law to make a profit, but when you have that as your motive, you don't take into effect the long-term effects. And once these sort of densities are approved and it becomes the norm, and we can expect every house in the street to have this density and higher. So yeah, the picture on the screen is the original house that was there. You can see it's a single car garage, it's a single car driveway. Uh, so there already was an addition that was approved many years ago. Um, and that's about all I need to say right now. I think everything else has been said. Thank you. Thank you. Does the committee have any questions of the speaker? Mr. Kahn? Mr. Khan, we can't hear can you. you. Can you hear me now? Yes. Okay, sir. My question is that he was saying that the garage door height is too too much. I didn't see in the picture. How do you justify that? I'm just looking at the rendering of the drawing of the garage door height as it relates to the neighboring properties. And I'm not an architect, but 
because they're pushing for 12 foot ceilings, it's pushing the ceiling height of the garage much higher than normal and inconsistent. It's inconsistent with other garages and inconsistent and not prevailing in the neighborhood. That much is for sure. Okay, thank you. Uh, does the committee have any further questions of the speaker? Being none, I'll go back to- uh, what Mr. Chair, I wanna to bring to your attention that Terry seems to have connected properly now. I'll go back to him then. Yeah. Uh, Terry Mills, are you there? One moment, Mr. Chair. I'm here, can you hear me? Perfect. Yes, I can hear you, sir. Can I get your full name and address, please? Yeah, my full name is Terry Mills, and I, am, I live at 101 Roehampton Avenue. Okay, sir, if you'd like to give us uh, uh, your thoughts on this application, but remember, please don't, re please don't re repeat material we've already heard. Yeah, okay, well, I'm the uh, registered plan, and I was uh, retained by the uh, association and the neighbors on this matter. Uh, boy, I'm trying. Are you getting an echo there? Anyway, uh, yes, we can hear you. I've been involved on the previous uh, application that went to T Lab, and uh, if you could put up my, the, my letter, the uh, visuals on the last page, I can speak to those. My letter, by the way, was sent in on uh, the first of March. And uh, it only got posted yesterday. Uh, thank you, Mr. Wills. He was able to find it, and I appreciate his effort. The um, what? What I have on my on these visuals is uh, a second. Here, I want to bring them up myself. Three. Uh, diagrams the upper run is number one and that shows the subject property in the middle with its lot size as you see on the left there and the two adjacent houses their footprints and you can see there's quite a difference in scale and I do appreciate that the adjacent houses are smaller but they are uh, you know compliant with uh, the neighborhood and on the other hand, what is uh, being in, proposed to be between them is uh, an extraordinarily large house. And, uh, you know, the, the Toronto system uh, of planning involves a yardstick such as length, height, setbacks, etc. And they are to be handled in concert with the... Uh, with the gross floor area and considered together. Uh, in this case, uh, we have neighbors on each side who have improved their houses and uh, lived there many years and then they wish to continue. So having that high on FSI, uh, I think uh, the adverse impacts on the immediate neighbors have to be taken into consideration and this is not a site for which one would want to uh, have uh, this extraordinary FSI. The diagrams on the right, and I see somebody use the upper one, but I put that in very carefully. Uh, and I appreciate the house on each side are, side are lower, but the, the style of the roof has created a higher main wall by cutting off the, the slope of the roof so it doesn't come and present an eaves level that's lower. And in my opinion, that variance for a higher main wall should, should be refused. And then the roof line can uh, project and it can uh, lower that main wall height. And that would be very helpful on the street. The lower uh, visual of two shows the rear elevation of the proposed house. And I've put the house on each side that's existing, 
keeping to the roof height and the ground level being relative to what you see in the front. So what you do see at the rear is a very large house projecting into the backyard. And in my mind, the uh, re reduction in the FSI would allow for mitigation of the mass of this proposed house. And I think I'd just like to just describe a little bit more my third evidence at the bottom, which uh, shows on the left the FSI of all Sir, the houses can you summarize, from Mount please? Pleasant through. Okay. Uh, the, the, the oval circle you see on the right shows you what I consider to be the prevailing or predominant uh, size of properties that fit and respect and reflect as well the contemporary development on the street. And in my opinion, development should be brought down to 0.5 FSI. And as I say, the okay. uh, main Thank wall you, height should be refused. Thank you. Thank you. Does the committee have any questions of the speaker? There being none, I'll go back to the uh, agent. Mr. Shakiri, are you there? Yes, sir. You've heard the comments. Um, uh, from the, you've heard the comments from the previous speakers. If you'd like to re re reply to them, please. Uh, sure, uh, sir. Five minutes um, is indeed uh, not adequate uh, to answer, but I do my best. Uh, that uh, I uh, hear all these um, uh, comments uh, from um, uh, the neighbors. I, I look at the design and proposal that we propose. Me, it, it occurs to me that maybe. Um, we're talking about another design. Uh, this one uh, is uh, completely cohesive with the neighborhood. I have uh, provided my exhibit C as my support material. Mr. Mr. Wills can display that, and uh, you can uh, look at that. Um, th these are just uh, some of the uh, houses in the neighborhood. I could have uh, uh, shown you all the buildings, uh, and uh, you would see many more of similar type of designs in this street that are completely cohesive with the design that we have presented here. Um, and uh, let alone, I mean, uh, yet, yet, uh, I, I'm, I'm, but I, I would like to mention that we are not asking for anything more than what the bylaw allows. Uh, um, uh, Mr. Mills, if you could uh, just uh, display that uh, uh, last page of Mr. Mills' um, uh, support material, I want to speak to that uh, front elevation that is presented because uh, um, um, I'm, I'm also a registered architect and I can testify to the scale of that graph is uh, majorly false. It's not uh, the house that uh, we're uh, proposing is about one and a half to two meters lower than that house. And uh, I mean, if if possible, I, I, I'd like to ask the panel to, to ask from Mr. Mills if uh, he has prepared that that, that um, um, uh, graph himself or or, or he's easy he quoting from someone else. Uh, that 35% um, FSI um, is clearly not uh, enough. Uh, uh, for this neighborhood. I'm sure um, that you see many of uh, the same type of applications, almost uh, no house in Gulfdale um, uh, can um, build a new house without asking for a, a, a FSI of some sort. Uh, and the existing house that my clients are living in, um, they, that house uh, is uh, has, a, has a FSI of nearly 45%. What we're asking here is not too much, uh, given the fact that they have a growing family. Uh, they have um, um, uh, tried uh, their best, um, and I have helped them not to exceed uh, uh, the uh, uh, precedence of the neighborhood, actually stay below that, uh, that level. And uh, um, the um, uh, height variance we're asking, as I, 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 I'd like to mention repeatedly, is only, only helping us reduce uh, the mass down. The um, uh, uh, prevailing uh, 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 character of the neighborhood, certain, certainly, uh, I mean, I, I can, I can tell that. I mean, you be the job judge, but, uh, but I, I think it, it completely uh, is in line with the character of the neighborhood. And the FSI, by the way, uh, is not uh, a definitive scale to measure the mass. Uh, I, I give you an example. If this house was built on the opposite side of the lot uh, of the of the street uh, which has longer lot depths about like maybe 15 20 foot deeper the FSI is going to be reduced to around uh, 50 percent 
So um, how would we judge uh, the two houses that uh, are uh, just uh, being built on different sides of the lots, but just, just a number? So I would say that the FSI and um, I think many planners actually have the same opinion that the FSI is not a definitive scale to measure the mass. Um, I'd be more than happy to answer any question. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Does the uh, committee have any questions of the speaker? There being none, could I get a motion on this application, please? Could I get a motion, please? Mr. Kidd? Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, it's a, a difficult application. I, I, I feel that the proposal is um, uh, perhaps a, 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 at least a, a good attempt at a compromise uh, of, between the, uh, the, the previous proposal. Uh, but uh, the amount of uh, the lack of support within the community is is uh, uh, quite daunting. Um, um, I, 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 I guess the the, uh, the height uh, the uh, proposal for the variance for the uh, the height I, I find to be modest uh, at uh, 0.3 of a meter. I'm not concerned that they, they, I'm not concerned about that. The uh, FSI, um, it, it does seem high, but uh, uh, according to the uh, stats uh, uh, produced, uh, it, they, it does seem to be in uh, line with uh, uh, previous, uh, the, more, the more recent uh, applications. Uh, uh, made in the area, and so on that basis, I'm going to put forward a motion to accept the application subject to forestry condition. Thank you, Mr. Kidd. Someone to second that motion? Ms. Sankar seconds. All those in favor? Opposed? Mr. Hunt dissenting. That motion carries. Uh, sir, your application's been approved subject to urban forestry conditions. Thank you very much. Thank you. Now on to item number four, 178 Alexandra Boulevard. I have two people registered to speak and the agent is uh, a Peter Higgins. Are you there, sir? Peter Higgins, are you there? I am. Yes, Mr. Higgins, can I get your full name and address, please? Thanks, Mr. Chairman. My full name is Peter James Higgins of Peter Higgins Architect Incorporated at 124 Merton Street, Suite 204, Toronto. Thank you, sir. Just uh, wanted to let you know there's a couple of reports on file with your application. There's a recommended conditions from urban forestry. And as well, there's a report from Transportation Services dated the 28th of February of this year, and they have no objections to the proposed parking stall width. Uh, that being the case, we have one other person here uh, who would like to speak on the application. If you'd like to give us a brief presentation on what you see as the merits of your proposal. Thank you, Mr. Chairman uh, and committee. My clients, uh, Cornell Wright, and Sarah McAvoy have lived in this house for 10 years and uh, are bringing up three young boys, uh, three young children, excuse me. And um, we, as is our normal routine, we delivered uh, 13 packages of architectural information to uh, the neighbors, all immediate neighbors across the street, behind and to the side. We have support from three, they should be on file. Those numbers are 170, 174, and 177, Alexandra. 174 is the immediate neighbor to the east, and 177 is right across the street. Um, we acknowledge that there is opposition from some neighbors in the rear, and I'm happy to speak to that. Um, we have no opposition or any comments from the planning department nor the councillor. Um, we have researched the neighborhood and there are many 
uh, examples of both reno additions and new builds that are at approximately the same or greater uh, FSI than we have, uh, including 115 Glencairn at 0.81, uh, along with 12 variances. Um, 177 Alexandra is a new build uh, with 15 variances, and 107 Alexandra at 0.79 with 14 variances. So there was some concern from the neighbor to the rear about the number of variances. Uh, I would say that's mostly because this is an existing house and so many of our uh, variances for side yards uh, are because we're building in line with the existing house and the existing house uh, side yard setback of 1.05 meters is to remain. Um, we have, uh, if the staff could put forward the drawings and the photos, particularly the photos of the rear yard, I think it would be helpful. Thank you. If you could just scroll through, there's the existing house. So the intention and across the street, the intention is to keep the existing house uh, updated with new windows, uh, raise the roof a little bit to have a, a little bigger uh, height on the second, on the third floor, excuse me. If you could show the rear photos, please. Uh, the rear of the house was an addition some years ago that is a three story straight wall and uh, it, it towers like an apartment building. And that was one of the things we were uh, right away hoping to remove, even though it's, it's usable space. So we thought we would design a, uh, a renovation addition that had much more in common with the front facade of the house, as opposed to the apartment building style um, rear facade. The uh, length and depth, both of those uh, are over by, uh, some meters. The depth particularly is because we have a covered terrace at the rear. If we can at least go to the plans, please. Um, the rear terrace is covered, but it is not uh, enclosed in any way. It's just a sunshade area. And we have a small area of the basement underneath that. So the top, that would be the top uh, right corner where the two skylights are, that is a the, where the basement um, bumps out. And because it's livable space below grade, we have to include it in all of our length and depth measurements. The, um, the length itself uh, for the two-story portion is 16.35 meters uh, with a rear one-story addition of 2.44. So the, the two-story mass is well within the allowable length. Um, we have platforms and balconies. I did mention, want to mention that we're going to remove the one variance for um, the number of balconies, and that is um, number eight, the number of, no, I beg your pardon, number seven, the, oh boy, I beg your pardon. Yeah, Mr. Higgins, are you proposing to, to revise your application? I wanted to remove one variant. And which one is that? Number eight. Number Sorry, eight. I that, wrong. That, that's the proposed, no. the proposed number of platforms located on the rear wall is two. So you're proposing to, to delete that? That's correct. Okay. And that is um, the proposed area above the platform on the second floor is 5.40 meters. That is ref that's number 10. That's referring to the okay. third hey, floor sir, fire Mr. escape. Mr. Okay. Mr. Higgins, just a minute. Okay, so, so variance, variance number eight is you've deleted. Okay, which is the proposed number of platforms located on the rear wall is two. Uh, I'm 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 really sorry, but I I've, I've waited so long I've kind of forgotten where I was at. Um, in fact, number eight stays. We're going to have the number of platforms as two. One is a Juliet balcony oh. at the second floor, and one is a fire escape balcony Ms. on Ms. the Mr. third floor. So, Mr. Higgins, can you just the, tell us? Can you tell us which you're proposing number to revise nine is your removed, application? Mr. Can you can you please tell the committee what 
revisions you're proposing to make? My my sincere apologies, Mr. Chair, but I'm normally straight on. I would like to remove number nine. Which? Number, number nine. Please remove number, that. Number nine. Correct. That's the one that says the proposed area of the platform above the second story is 4.65 square meters. That is correct. So that one's oh, deleted. Okay. Yeah, that's correct. And that, that's the only one to be deleted. Thank okay, you. Okay, thank you. Okay, but, now, if you could summarize, please, sir. Well, I think what we have here is a, um, a reinventing of a beautiful old house with uh, a new roof, new dormers, a uh, new addition off the back, new addition that replaces a vertical three-story um, addition that was put on some years ago. Uh, we have support, no planning opposition, no councillor opposition, and I would be happy to speak further when we hear from the rear neighbours who are in opposition. Thank you, sir. Does the committee Thank have you. any questions of the speaker? Being none, we'll go to the next uh, next person on our list. I have a Julia or John Page. Are you there? Mr. Chair and members, in this case, it'll be John Page that's speaking. Hey. Mr. Page, are you there? Hey, Chair. Mr. Page? Yes. Can I get your full name and address, please? Full name, Anthony John Page, address 195 Glen Cairn Avenue, Toronto. Okay, thank you. If you'd I'm like to with, give us your thoughts. Wife. Would you like to give us your thoughts on this application? Yes, um, I'm speaking for the three families who live on Glen Cairn immediately behind the proposed renovation. Uh, and we're uh, behind and one property to the west of the renovation. Uh, next door is uh, Howard and Patty Goldblatt, who are immediately behind the uh, renovation. And one further to the east is Lynn McCardle. And uh, unfortunately, they can't uh, attend the uh, hearing today, but they've asked me to speak on their behalf. Um, we collectively sent in a letter, which I've seen is on file. Uh, we collectively filed a notice of objection. Uh, the uh, proposed renovation pushes significantly its presence and mass towards us, well past the city permitted zoning bylaws. Uh, for height, width, and depth. Uh, the proposed property is a metre higher than the maximum permitted uh, on a house, and this is already one of the tallest houses in the area. Uh, we look at it from our backyards uh, in its current form. Um, it adds an, elevate, uh, an elevated covered rear patio um, of over 400 square feet. We're not quite sure what the impact of that is, but it's very much like an additional uh, building, certainly in terms of the image that we will see from uh, our backyards. It's pushing back 20 to 30 feet uh, from where the current property is after the covered terrace, leaving only a backyard of about 30 to 35 feet um, of green garden space. Um, the uh, overall coverage at 80%, we've heard quite a bit about this coverage uh, on the previous hearing, but at 80%, it's hugely higher than the permitted 35%. Uh, that's not, in uh, my opinion, a minor variance before taking into account uh, the 2,500 square foot basement, which is an awful lot of extra living space, and the covered patio of about 400 square feet. Um, the size of that variance was sufficient to uh, enable LPRO to contact us uh, with the uh, Lytton Park Residents Association expressing a general concern over the precedent that a uh, renovation of that size would have around uh, this neighbourhood. Uh, the proposed length at 23.69 metres versus the maximum permitted 17 metres, it's pushing further into the back. It's creating a wall. Uh, on both sides that we and other neighbours will see. Um, even though there are a number of larger homes in our neighbourhood, it seems that an FSI more in the 50% range is, is more acceptable in terms of uh, leaving uh, a large enough house for people to live in, but not creating a block, a mass uh, on the neighbourhood. 
Uh, the multiple balconies were a little puzzled by the fire safety reference, but they overlook uh, our two neighbours, uh, Howard and Paddy, and Lynn's pools, which are at the bottom of their gardens. Um, that's intrusive. That means that people on those balconies can look down into what should be a private area. Um, also, the renovation would push um, the centre of gravity of that home um, much closer to uh, that area that Howard and Paddy and Lynn uh, enjoy at this time. Uh, the height projects an impression of bulk. Um, it's hard to be sure, but the impact of the terrace does puzzle us. Um, uh, we will all be able to see this huge property from wherever we're looking out the back. City zoning should be to constrain use of the space uh, and intrusion on other people's space. Um, we note that the two of the three objection letters that were on file are from Alexandra. So they're not from people who are looking at the back of this property. They're the people who are more likely to look at the front. There's a third objection from uh, somebody on Grand Cairn who lives a little further down the street. So uh, summing up, we think that the cumulative impact of these multiple variances, 15, uh, is, is unreasonable, excessive length, height, covered patio, two rear balconies, and a very large FSI. We would ask that this uh, application be rejected, President, that it sets for its impact on us and my other neighbours. Thank you. Thank you. Does the committee have any questions of the speaker? There being none, I'll go to the uh, next person. I'll, I'll go back to Mr. Higgins. Are you there, sir? I am, Mr. I am, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Yeah, if you'd like to respond to Mr. Uh, Page. I would, please. I think the number of variances really is not the issue, as I said. Uh, I think five of them have to do with the existing side yard setback. We're not going to demolish the house in order to um, not have a side yard variance on the west side. The west side, uh, the neighbor is not uh, complaining, upset, has not sent in a letter of opposition and has been quite friendly. The, um, there are massive trees in the rear yard that block any view from uh, this third floor required fire escape balcony um, that would block any uh, privacy overlooks to the neighbors to the north. Um, there was a comment that this house is already one of the tallest in the neighborhood. That is absolutely not the case. Uh, and if we could please try to pull up the, uh, the photos of the rear of the house. I mean, if you give me 15 seconds of grace there, because I have to have that to make my point, please. Um, there is no rear yard setback variance. We have 15.47 meters from the back of the house to the rear property line, whereas the allowable is only, only re is required to be 10.52. So we have far in excess of the rear uh, setback. I, I just wanted to comment to um, Mr. Page that it's not coverage, it's FSI at 80%. And as I noted, there are at least uh, three right across the street that are in the 79 to 80% range. And um, in terms of the heights, we have a very modest height variance that was matched or uh, greater than in terms of the new houses across the street. We have wall heights that are well below the allowable with the exception that the zoning department decided to uh, measure to the side uh, there we go. To the side dormers, the eaves are way below the allowable. It's just the dormers that we're proposing that go above. And usually the zoning department um, doesn't count a dormer wall as height. Some examiners do, and we have one. So if, if the neighbors thought that this overlook was not daunting, um, I don't know what is. This is a straight up, as I said, kind of an apartment building addition to the existing. We are removing this and the addition in front of it, et cetera, and we're creating what I think is a uh, house form that was much more compatible with the neighbors around on either side. You can see them and for the, uh, the front of the house and the neighbors across the street where we don't have new houses yet. Um, 
The rear patio was mentioned by Mr. Page as being uh, uh, almost like another part of the house. It's simply a covered patio, nothing more, nothing less. And it is only two feet above grade, so there won't be any privacy overlooks, overlooks from anyone at 178. Um, Alexandra having dinner or having drinks standing on their patio uh, overlooking the neighbors, Not nothing whatsoever. It's basically uh, at the height of the patio that you're seeing, to, excuse me, to the left on this rear photograph. Um, I, I can't state enough that when you have a, a renovation addition, you're bound to have additional uh, variances. I think these are all reasonable. The house has, if we can go back to the main uh, facade, please. The house is fully hipped with four dormers, north, south, east, west. And it's very much in, in keeping with the style of the existing neighborhood. Um, yes, we have a slightly higher roof. We need that for drainage because of the zoning the regulations, which require an upper uh, sloped roof. And um, the dormers show for themselves. They reduce the mass greatly. We have very low eaves, as you can see here. Those eaves are one foot higher than the existing eaves of the house. So I don't, don't really see how we can uh, go wrong here. We have something that I believe is very sensitive, very sensitive addition that gives the floor space to my clients. And I remind you that in terms of length and depth, it is only because we have um, a playroom space in the basement under the terrace that we have the excessive um, uh, length and depth, and we'd be happy to be uh, held the plans in terms of that being. Mr. Higgins, can you summarize, please? I, I think I have, sir. Okay. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you. Does the committee have any questions of the speaker? There being none, could I get a motion on this application, please? Mr. Hunt? Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, I've listened carefully to the presentation by Mr. Higgins and uh, the presentation by Mr. Page. And I think that on balance, uh, given that the transportation department has no objections, there were no comments from the planning department and there is only the usual urban forestry requirements. And also the fact that Mr. Higgins has eliminated variance nine, which uh, in my mind would, uh, would uh, mitigate uh, overlooks. Uh, I will move uh, approval of this application. Thank you, Mr. Hunt. Someone to second that? Ms. Sankar seconds, all those in favor? Opposed? Mr. Khan dissenting, that motion carries. Uh, sir, your, uh, at your revised application has been approved subject to urban forestry conditions. Thank you very much. Thank Have you. a good afternoon. See you a little later. Bye-bye. Item number five, 933 Briar Hill Avenue. I have one person registered to speak. That this is, is Daniel Robinson on the line. Yes, can I get your full name and address, please? Daniel Robinson, 933 Briar Hill. Yes, thank you, sir. I notice uh, uh, you have uh, two variances before us. It's pretty clear what you're asking for, and this is this with regards to the uh, extending the deck at the rear of the dwelling. Pretty clear what you're asking for. Uh, I note that there are no staff comments or conditions attached to your file. Is there, uh, is there anything that you'd like to tell the committee that isn't contained in the material we have before us this morning? Yeah, I mean, I'm not an architect. This is my first time doing this, uh, but um, we are asking to extend our deck a small amount uh, just to enable a uh, you know sufficient furniture for a table of chairs to get my family, my two small children around uh, the table, and also to kind of isolate a place to kind of enjoy and sit down so that we can have a, a green space uh, beyond that deck. Uh, we feel if you're not able to do that and the table and chairs, we need to go down into the lawn and we you know, have two, we have a six month child and a two year old daughter. 
uh, and we just feel like this is a reasonable request uh, to extend DEC. Uh, we hope it is approved. Okay, thank you, sir. Does the committee have any questions of the speaker? There being none, could I get a motion on this application, please? Mr. Khan? Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, I find uh, there is no staff recommendation for this, and I, I see it's minor vari variances, and therefore I'll move for approval. Thank you, Mr. Khan. Someone to second Mr. Khan's motion. Ms. Sankar seconds. All those in favor? <laughs> That motion carries, sir. Your application has been unanimously approved without condition. Thank you very much. Thank you. Item number six, 12 Dunsmore Gardens. I have two people registered to speak. Uh, the agent or the owner is uh, Diana Gulas, G-U-L-L-A-C-E, or Dominic Gulas. Are you there? Mr. Chair, um there has been a bit of a mistake on the list uh, of uh, registers here. Um, Gianni Reggiani is the actual agent for the file. Oh, okay. And they Thank are on you. the call, so I'll unmute them now. Thank you. Gianni Regina, are you there? Mr. Chair, in respect to committee members and municipal staff. Oh, thank it's you. It's Gianni Regina speaking. Yeah, Johnny, can I get your full name and uh, your full name and address, please? Yes. It's Gianni Regina, 38 Selva Piano Crescent. In Vaughan, Ontario. Okay, thank you, sir. Just a moment here. Uh, I notice you've got we've got your application before us. I'm just going through here to see if there's anything on file. There's a report from City Planning dated the 1st of March of this year. They have no objections to your application, provided the proposal is developed substantially in accordance with the left and right elevation and site plan drawing submitted to the committee and date stamped as received on 18th of February 22, 2022, shown as attachments one, two, and three to their report. And there's also a letter of support uh, for your application from Councillor Pasternak. Uh, I'll just ask, sir, uh, it's pretty clear what you're asking for and the variances that we have before us. Is there anything that you'd like to tell the committee that isn't contained in the material we have before us this afternoon? No, you have all the reports. We were just going to acknowledge and accept the uh, the general conditions made by the uh, municipal planning report. Uh, just to uh, add to that, you are already aware that the municipal councillor uh, is in support of this application through that letter. We feel this application meets the four tests and it satisfies uh, those four tests, and we ask that you kindly approve this application. Okay, thank you very much, sir. Does the uh, committee have any questions of the speaker? There being none, could I get a motion on this application, please? Mr. Khan? Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, I'm just repeating the staff recommendation for approval. The proposed be, proposal be developed substantially in accordance with the, with the left uh, elevation and right elevation and the site plans drawing submitted to the Committee of Adjustment uh, on February 18th. Uh, attachment one and two to this report, this application be approved. Thank you, Mr. Khan. Someone to second that motion. Mr. Hunt seconds. All those in favor? That motion carries unanimously, sir. Your application has been unanimously approved subject to uh, city planning conditions. Thank you very much. Have a great day. Thank you, sir. Item number seven, 364 Glen Grove Avenue. I have... The agent, Martin Rendell, are you there, sir? Mr. Rendell, are you there? Martin Rendell, are you there? Mr. Chair, I unmuted them, but I think they muted themselves. Go ahead, Martin. Please don't sure, mute and unmute yourself. Here, sir, Martin Rendell. Yes, hello, sir. Can, can I you get hear your me? Full? Yes, I can hear you. Can I get your full name and address? Sure. Martin Rendell, 35 Delburn Drive, Toronto. Okay, thank you, sir. Uh, just, I'm just noting on your application, we have uh, three other persons registered to speak. Uh, I'm just going through your file. I note here that uh, there's a recommended condition from urban forestry. There's also a report from city planning dated the uh, 1st of March, and it indicates 
recommends eliminating variance number eight regarding the front yard soft, front yard soft landscaping, reducing variance number nine regarding the proposed second floor balcony from 28.3 square meters to 14.98 square meters. And if these revisions are, appro are approved by the committee, staff recommends that the building length be developed substantially in accordance with the site plan and second floor plan drawings attached to their report. I just wanted to ask her, did you want to make those changes as recommended by planning? Yes, I, I'm in agreement with the um, recommendations of planning to eliminate the front yard land, soft landscaping variants and reduce the balcony as described in the planning staff okay. report. So I'll just go through that variance number eight regarding uh, variance number eight is, is deleted. And variance number nine is reduced from 28.3 square meters to 14.98 square meters. Is that correct, sir? That's correct, sir. Okay, thank you. And there's there's no further changes? No, those were the only revisions. Okay. If you'd like if you'd if you'd like to give the committee a brief presentation on what you see as the merits of your revised application. Sure, the, the proposal before the committee is for a two-story house with a flat roof as uh, you can see on the plans there. In, in the time allotted, I'll just go through the, the variances indicating the planning merits of them. Variance number one deals with building height. And as the committee knows, flat roofs at the present time have a different maximum height than a pitched roof house. So the maximum Height for a flat roof dwelling is 7.2 meters. The variance here is for 8.4 meters height for a two-story dwelling. The general intent and purpose of having a lower height for flat roof houses is, first of all, it limits the house, flat roof houses to two stories. And the intent also is to have the building height generally align with the height of the eaves of a pitched roof house that, uh, for example, may be adjacent to them. Proposed dwelling is two stories and the 8.4 meter height variance here brings the height of the dwelling to approximately the height that you would find the eaves on a pitched roof house, which typically, depending on the roof style, varies from 7.5 meters to 8.5 meters. Committee may be aware that the flat roof height provisions for a dwelling have been under appeal at the Ontario Land Tribunal for some time. In October of this year, the OLT issued an order um, adopting the recommendations of city planning staff to alter the way the height of flat roof dwellings is are dealt with. Uh, those recommendations which planning staff put forward and OLT accepted was to increase the height for all dwellings in the RD zone by one meter. That would raise the height for all dwellings, for slope roof dwellings to 11 meters here. And to set the maximum height for a flat roof dwelling as 2.5 meters less than the maximum dwelling height. So that brings us to, in the future, for a flat roof dwelling to a height of 8.5 meters. That hasn't yet been implemented by Council, but that um, change in, in maximum height for flat roof dwellings clearly is the intent of the planning department at the present time. And you'll note that community planning did not object to the, the height variance. Variance number two deals with building length, and building length works together with building depth. Um, building depth, as you know, limits the degree to which a dwelling can extend into the lot. So the, the variance for building length here um, allows for the rear wall of the house to be within the maximum 
welling depth of 19 meters. In other words, the, the length does not extend into the lot greater than permitted by the maximum permitted building depth. In my opinion, that meets the intent of the bylaw. Floor space index, the requested floor space index is 0.41 Point four seven four. I'm sorry, and I've included in my letter to the committee a summary of other floor space index variances approved within the area, and with great respect, 4.74 is at the extreme low end of, of variances approved within the neighborhood that range as, as uh, high as uh, 0.72. In terms of side yard setbacks, the proposed side yard setbacks are greater on each side than the setbacks of the current house. The side yard setbacks are 1.22 and 1.23 meters, greater than the 1.09 and 1.07 meters of the current house, and they are greater than the side yard setbacks of the adjacent two houses. In the interest of time, I'll skip the variance for the width of the Sir, front Sir, can you summarize, stairs. please? Sure. The, the second floor balcony area, in discussions with planning staff, we reduce the area of the balcony, and it incorporates privacy screen. And then lastly, there's a variance for the rear yard setback of the ancillary structure, okay. the, the you, shed sir. at the back of the property. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, does the committee have any questions of the speaker? There being none, I'll go to the next person on the list. I have uh, Moira Armstrong. Are you there? Mr. Chair, Moira is not present on the call at this time. Okay, I'll take her off the list. I'll go to the next person on the list, Barbara or Raymond Zenkovich. Barbara or Raymond Zenkovich? Mr. Chair and members, uh, Barbara is the name listed. Um, I have gone ahead and unmuted them. Barbara Zenkovich, are you there? Barbara Zenkovich, are you there? I'll go to the next person on the list, Mr. Wills. Elise Hertz, are you there? Elise Hertz, are you there? Yes, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you, madam. If you could give us your full name and address, please. My name is Elise Hertz, and I am speaking on behalf of Lytton Park Residents Organization at 2708 Young Street. Okay, thank you. If you'd like to give us your thoughts on this, applic on this revised application. The proposal in its current form fails to meet the required four-part test for a minor variance application. The full two-story height of the building has a length of 18.97 meters, where a length of only 17 meters is permitted. The intent of the length regulation has not been met as the excessive length will result in an excessive mass and scale. The revised proposal continues to request a second floor balcony, which is 14.98 square meters, whereas an area of four square meters is permitted. The proposed balcony remains 275% larger than permitted. The proposed balcony is approximately 16 feet above the ground. The intent of regulating the area of raised platforms is to help mitigate the potential for adverse privacy and overlook issues. We are of the opinion that the overall size has the potential to result in privacy and overlook issues and the requested variance does not meet the general intent of the zoning bylaw. As such, we request that this variance be refused. The proposal height of 8.2 meters where 7.2 meters is permitted. The intent of the flat roof bylaw regulation as it currently stands has not been met and is not minor. The proposed rear yard setback of the ancillary structure is 0.3 meters, whereas 1.53 meters is required. This variance is not, is not minor and would have uh, severe impacts on the backyard neighbors. Cumulative impact. 
The combined impact of excessive length height, reduced east side yard setback and west yard setback result in a scale and massing which does not maintain the intent of the bylaw and is nor is the cumul cumulative variation from the bylaw minor in nature. The excessively long and tall side wads, walls will have a substandard side yard setback to both abutting neighbors. The massive balcony will project beyond the rear wall, which is nearly two meters deeper into the property than would be permitted as of right due to the requested length variance. Beyond the excessive length, the balcony projects an additional 3.4 meters or 11.3 feet. The proposal will adversely impact the privacy of abutting neighbors. The zoning bylaw intent has not been maintained. Cumulatively, the proposed variances are neither minor variations from the bylaw, nor will the impacts to abutting properties be minor in nature. The proposal is not desirable. The Lytton Park Residents Organization requests that this application be refused. Thank you. Thank you, Madam. Does the committee have any questions of the speaker? There being none, I'll go back and try uh, Barbara Zenkovich. Are you there? Yeah. Barbara Zenkovich, are you there? Barbara Zenkovich, are you there? Can you hear us? One more time. Barbara Zenkovich, are you there? Mr. Chair, members, Barbara is on the call. She is unmuted and she has been in email contact with me over the last moment, few moments saying that she's, you know, trying to speak. I'm not I'm not really sure what the problem is here at this time. Barbara Zenkovich, are you there? I can't confirm she is unmuted on our end. Maybe she has muted herself on her end. Um, when, and when I say that, maybe if, if she's called in, she's put herself on mute on her own phone and she has to like maybe unmute her own phone because uh, she is officially unmuted on the WebEx. So she, be, she, she, she should be able to speak. Uh, Barbara, go ahead. Barbara Zenkovich, are you there? Uh, I'm, I'm going to uh, take her off the list, Mr. Wells. Go back to Mr. Rendell. Mr. Rendell, are you there? Um, sure. yeah. Mr. Rendell, are you there? Yes, I am, sir. I, I am now, sir, yes. Yes. Uh, if you'd like to respond to the comments from Ms. Hertz. Sure. In, in terms of uh, the setbacks, as I indicated, the proposed setbacks for the new house are greater than the setbacks on the current house, as well as exceed the setbacks of the two adjacent houses. So, in fact, the variances and the new house improves the condition um, both on the property in terms of side yard setbacks and the relationship of the new house and the distance to the two adjacent properties. In terms of the comments about uh, it being the house being too large and uh, too deep for the passing and scale of the dwelling is uh, among other things, a function of the height. It's a two story house. The length, while it exceeds the 17 meter maximum, as I indicated, the house does not extend more than 19 meters into the lot. So the rear wall is where the zoning bylaw permits a house to extend on the lot. In terms of the balcony at the rear, the balcony has been downsized, pulled to the uh, away from the east side lot line, reduced in size, has a privacy screen. And in terms of the privacy of other backyards, um, I would note that people can see each neighbor's side yard from their rear windows, from their rear um, patios or decks. It's not uncommon to, to be able to see other people's uh, backyards, even with, without a balcony. And in my opinion, the balcony doesn't introduce any um, new privacy concerns or aggravate any current conditions. In terms of the setback for the shed at the rear lot line, 
the shed is adjacent to the rear lot line of the house immediately to the north. And in my opinion, the the lesser setback has no impact on the function of that rear yard or the, the privacy uh, found there. Uh, I hope that answers or helps uh, answer some of the questions or points Thank raised. Thank you. Uh, does the committee have any questions of the speaker? Mr. Khan? Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. I would like to reiterate uh, the variance number three and variance number nine, the question raised by the lady. I mean, still this gentleman has to realize that his FSI is still high. And, and variance number nine platform, reduction to 14.98 as against a four meter square is way, way too too, too far large to be acceptable as a minor variance. In, in, in terms of variance number three, the proposed FSI is 0.476. The maximum permitted is 0.35. Uh, simply on, on the numbers, in my view, that is not excessive and certainly is well within the scope of being a minor variance. Sir, you are 26 percent more than Mr. Khan let him Mr. Khan let him finish. Okay. And in terms of uh, the, the variances, um, again, in a planning evaluation, it is not the percentage by which a variance may uh, differ from a zoning bylaw standard. It's based on the planning merits of that. And among other things, if there are demonstrable undue negative impacts created by that. Um, again, if, if numbers were, were simply the, the rationale for the FSI variances, the majority of the FSI variances in this neighborhood would then not be considered minor and they've been approved. Those houses exist and they have, um, they exist compatibly with the neighborhood. In terms of the, the balcony variance, again, I, I don't think a simple numerical review of this in terms of a quantitative analysis deals with assessing the function of, of the balcony, how it will be used, and how the design of the balcony, it's the private screens, et cetera, mitigate overlook and privacy impacts in the typical manner that is applications before this committee demonstrate and are approved at. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Does the committee have any further questions of the speaker? There being none, could I, uh, I'm just going to try one more time. Great idea, Mr. Chair. It looks like the uh, Barbara is on the call, though she did not. She's just called in with a different phone number that she provided. I'll, I'll try her one more time. Barbara Zenkovich. Yes. Can you hear me now? Yes, I can hear you, madam. Can I get your full name? And oh, address, thank God. Oh, thank God. Okay, I'm going to try to calm down. Okay. Thank you for the opportunity to participate in the hearing process for the above noted application. We are the immediate neighbors to the east of the subject property and are here to convey our strong objections to the proposal. The variance in this case, height, weight, height, length, floor space, index, side yard, setback, side yard, setback, exterior width, etc., are not minor. Their cumulative impact is not consistent with the prevailing character of the homes in the immediate area and are excessive and give no consideration to the neighbors and would have significant negative impact on our property. In terms of the overall building permit footprint, the following variances requested add cumulative to an excessively large home that does not meet the character of the neighborhood and will have huge negative impact on the use and enjoyment of our property. The proposed length of the building would result in a two-story high monolithic wall, higher than is admitted in the bylaw, sticking out approximately four meters past our home, since our extension was done in 2004 and is well within the length bylaw. This continues to be the case even after the minor change is made on February 25th to pull back a portion of the second floor. 
So you have mentioned that the FSI, there are higher ones that are approved. But one of the things to really look at in this case is that there is a a, a lot of avoiding in this. So, in fact, the FSI is, is deceivingly understated because of the way the calculations are done. And, in fact, the footprint is, is excessive still, despite the fact that the FSI is smaller than what other FSIs have been approved. The second for balcony. Essentially, actually, I'm sorry. I'm so emotional here. The second floor balcony. One second here. The second floor balcony, this request cannot be allowed to go forward. It is almost four times what the bylaw limit is. Do not be fooled by the fact that they originally asked for seven times. As far as I can tell, nothing this large has been allowed. In fact, in reading 50 Committee of Adjustment rulings in our neighborhood, I can only find two that even asked for a variance. So other homes are following the bylaw. If, as a homer directly impacted by this major variance, I am begging you to refuse this variance and not set a new high watermark that will affect other requests in the future. We have seen that once something, a high water met, gets approved, it continues to be approved. You cannot allow this to happen. It affects the use of our yard dramatically, and we will be suffering, and other neighbors will be suffering for this as well. In summary, overall, this application is not consistent with the neighborhood and is not supported by the neighbors. The size creep that has been allowed by the city has to stop. You've seen that although, unfortunately, because of the delays in getting through today's thing, a number of people were not able to stay on the call because of other commitments. But there were many neighbors that are opposed to this application. Um, So as you've seen, multiple neighbors said, sent in letters. I wrote a long letter. The Rate Payers Association had as well. And as a homeowner adjacent to this application, we ask you to decline these variances or at least look at the ones that are the worst or, worst case, defer the application until these issues could be resolved. Thank you. And I also ask for you to try to live within the bylaws. Thank you, Madam. Does the committee have any questions of the speaker? There being none, I'll go back to Mr. Rendell. Mr. Chair, before we go back to Mr. Rendell, I have a last minute email from an area resident that is also on the call that'd like to speak to this. Okay, uh, do we have a name? Yeah, the name is uh, Kathy Rupik. Okay, is it Kathy Rubick there? Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Can I get your full name and address, please? Yes, actually, my, my name is Catherine Cooper. I'm married to Milan Rupik. We're at 361 Glen Grove Avenue West. Okay, thank you. If you'd like to give us your thoughts on this application, and Madam, please don't repeat material we've already heard. Tell us something right. new. Uh, well, okay, uh, although I, I'd like you to know the basis of my concerns. Um, I'm at 361, which is uh, across the street on a, a slight diagonal. Um, I've my first time doing this. I'm not sure what how the committee defines minor, but um, I think clearly at least some of these variances would not be considered minor on their own. And uh, as other the others have said, it's the cumulative effect that is the real concern here because this house, the proposed dwelling, is wider on both sides uh, than allowed, uh, longer, higher and bigger overall. The applicant um, planner, the applicant agent mentioned how it is um, actually less wide than the current dwelling, but you have to look at the overall effect. The current dwelling is a modest Cape Cod style house, uh, but when you add on, you know, the height of this and the straight up sides of it, etc., then, you know, the width is definitely part of the uh, factor and it's the cumulative overall effect. Um, my, my other, uh, so, so that's my concern as an immediate neighbor. Um, and, uh, but my other concern is the precedent that this uh, clearly will set. And, and as we've heard, uh, you know, just from the submissions on this application and the other applications, 
uh, past practice and precedent clearly matters. And, and this Madam, is a real Madam, concern. Madam, committee doesn't deal with precedents. We deal with each application on its own merits. Well, in the, in the sense that uh, the applicants are, refer to what else has been allowed on the street. So that, that's what I mean they, by that. But can, in any event. They can do that, but we deal with it on its own merits. Okay, thank you. Um, uh, I just wanted to, to put this in context. So this is a, um, a, a clearly a period, at least on this street, of renewal. There are a lot of houses being uh, demolished and rebuilt, and I'm aware of, of a few others in the immediate vicinity where that is in the offing. And so, you know, what happens on one is of a concern to, to the neighbours in terms of the, the, the down-the-road impact. Um, so those are my uh, submissions. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Does the committee have any questions of the speaker? Go back to Mr. Rendell. Are you there? Mr. Rendell, are you there? I, I, I'm here, Mr. Smithies. Yeah, you, you heard the last two speakers. I don't, you, you can, if you'd like to cover off anything that you haven't covered off previously, please proceed. Yeah, I mean, the, the last two speakers, again, have, have repeated um, objections that previous speakers raised. My, my comments are unchanged from the comments I, I made previously. In my view, the side yard setbacks here do improve the condition. The scale of the dwelling, in my view, a two-story dwelling um, is totally appropriate for the property and in the context of the neighborhood. If you look at the other approvals in the area, I agree with you, sir, precedents are not binding. But clearly, this property does not set any new benchmarks for variances in, in this neighborhood with respect to things like FSI or building length or side yard setbacks. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Does the committee have any questions of the speaker? There being none, could I get a motion on this revised application, please? Please note that variance number eight regarding the front yard landscaping has been deleted. And variance number nine has been uh, modified, revised from 28.3 square meters to 14.98 square meters. And both of those are the recommendations that were made by city planning. So if I could get a motion on this revised application, please. Ms. Sankar. Yes, through you, Mr. Chair, you know, this was a, a difficult one because upon looking at it, I just, I, I didn't see that, you know, the variances that were before me did appear in comparison to many variances that I see as sort of minor. And then the explanations provided by the uh, agent here today um, did summarize that for me. I did understand what the debutantes were saying and the concerns that they were raising. Um, and I, I took that very seriously, but upon review of this entire application and the changes made by the agent here today, and the fact that there is no other concerns from the staff board, and it will be subject to forestry, and that um, the side yard setbacks are going to be, uh, you know, um, done in a manner that will be in favor of uh, more more room to the neighbors and the fact that also uh, not that we look at precedents but there's evidence of of this type of um, build and you know it, it, the type of structure and space required um, that there's evidence of other builds in the area that would meet the character of that specific streetscape I'm going to put forward a motion to approve this application and I'll motion to approve it with the changes made by the applicant here today in that he will eliminate variance number eight and then variance number nine will be reduced to um, 14 point um, nine eight meters. Um, it will be subject to forestry and also subject to 
uh, the staff report um, of March 1st, where the building length be developed substantially in accordance with the site plan and second floor plan drawings attached to the report. And that's my motion. Thank you, Ms. Sankar. Someone to second that motion? Mr. Kidd seconds. All those in favor? That motion carries unanimously, sir. Your revised application has been unanimously approved subject to urban forestry and city planning conditions. Thank you. Thank you. We're now on item number eight, 48 Fifeshire Road. I have uh, one person registered to speak. That is the agent. I have uh, Hugh Trong, T-R-U-O-N-G. Are you there? Hello. Hello? Hello. Yes, hello? Yes. Uh Yes, yes can you I get hear me? Full, can I get your full name and address, please? Yes, uh, it's Hui Trong. Um, the address is 312 Browns Line uh, in Octobical. Great. Thank um, you. The thing is, what I, happened? Thank you, um, sir. I just wanted to, uh, yes. be before, we, before we start, uh, mm -hmm. it's pretty clear what you're asking for and the variances we have before us. I note that I've gone through your file. I note there's two reports here, one from the uh, Toronto Region Conservation Authority dated the 22nd of February of this year. They have no objections to your application. There's a report from uh, Ravine and Natural Features Protection, which uh, dated the 28th of February. They have no objections, but they do have a, a recommended condition a de detailing tree protection. But other than that, there's no other staff uh, comments. I just wanted to ask, I think it's pretty clear what the, the committee's clear what you're asking for, but I'll just ask, sir, is there anything you'd like to tell the committee that isn't contained in the material we have before us this afternoon? Uh, no, sir. Okay, thank you. Does the uh, committee have any questions of the speaker? There being none, could I get a motion on this application, please? Ms. Sankar? Yes, sir, you, Mr. Chair. Um, I, I do believe that uh, this application does meet the four tests uh, as is. I'm uh, convinced by the fact that there is no uh, staff report, uh, nothing from transport. Um, conservation um, is uh, happy with this as well as forestry. And the only condition that I will put, so I'll move to approve this application. I'll make it subject to the ravine report. And that's my motion. Thank you, Ms. Sankar. Someone to second that? Mr. Hunt seconds. All those in favor? That motion carries unanimously, sir. Your application has been unanimously approved, subject to a condition from Ravine and Natural Features Protection. Thank you very much, sir. All right, thank you. I, we're now on item number 922, Craigmore Crescent. I have one person registered to speak. That's a Shen Shu Zhang. Are you there? Yes. Shen Shu Zhang, are you there? Yes. Uh, good afternoon, uh, Mr. Chair. I'm Shen Shu Zhang, the applicant. Okay. Thank you, sir. Uh, can I get your full name and address again? Yeah, my name is Shen Shu Zhan, uh, 98 Scarsdale Road, North York. Okay, thank you, sir. I just wanted to ask, we have, I've gone through your file. There's a yeah. uh, couple of reports on file from staff. There's a recommended conditions from urban forestry. There's a report from city planning dated the 1st of March of this year. They recommend that you modify variance number two for the proposed lot coverage from 32.8% to 32%. And there's a letter from Councillor Filion dated the 8th of March that uh, supports planning's recommendation. I just wanted to ask, sir, did you want to modify variance number two as requested by city planning? Yes. So that is a whole design for a young couple, and we like to read. Uh, modify the uh, item two to the propose the local coverage to 32 percent. Okay, so variance number two, you're proposing to change it from uh, lot coverage from 32.8 percent to 32 percent. 
Yes. Okay, thank you. And is that's the only change? Correct. Okay, thank you. Pretty clear what you're asking for, sir, in your application. Uh, I'll just ask, is there anything you'd like to tell the committee that uh, isn't contained in the material we have before us this afternoon? Uh, no, uh, but if you have a question, I'd like to answer. Okay, thank you. Does the committee have any questions of the speaker? There being none, please note we uh, variance number two has been modified as requested by planning. That's the lot coverage has been reduced from 32.8% to 32%. So if I could get a motion on this revised application, please, Mr. Hunt. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, having listened to the applicant and his uh, preparedness to modify his variance to reducing the lot coverage from 32.8 to 32.0 and subject to urban forestry requirements, I would move this application be approved. Thank you, Mr. Hunt. Someone to second that? Mr. Kahn seconds. All those in favor? Motion carries unanimously. Sir, your, your revised application has been unanimously approved uh, subject to urban forestry conditions. Now on item number 10, 140 Olive Avenue. I have one person registered to speak and that is a Mahan Hadari. Are you there? Good afternoon. Yes, hello. Can I get your full name and address, please? Uh, good afternoon, Mr. Chairman, member of the committee. My name is Mehran Haydari, uh, 1090 Dunmills Road, Unit 506, North Surf, Ontario. Okay, thank you, sir. I've got, gone through your uh, application. I note that there are a couple of files on application with, uh, with your, with your uh, uh, couple of reports on file with your application. There's recommended condition from urban forestry, and there's also a report from city planning dated the 1st of March, and they're recommending uh, a number of changes. They would like uh, you to modify variance number one for the proposed rear deck project projection from 3.66 meters to 3 meters. Uh, modify variance number two for the proposed building length from 19.1 meters to 18.5 meters. Modify variance number five for the proposed east side yard setback from 0 0.61 meters to 0 0.9 meters. Modify variance number six for the proposed lot coverage from 32.7% to 30, 32%. Eliminate variance number seven for the proposed roof eaves encroachment. Eliminate variance number eight for the proposed building depth. And eliminate variance number nine for the proposed west side yard setback. And if, all, if you, th those, uh, those revisions are made, uh, staff recommends that this revised proposal be developed substantially in accordance with the site plan drawing submitted to the committee date stamped as received on February 16th, 2022 attached as attachment one to this report. So, sir, what I'm going to ask you is, do you want to make those changes as recommended by planning? Uh, yes, sir, and I already revised the drawing and I sent to the staff and the site plan is in front of you is exactly the same that we revised and we are okay with those changes. And also I talked with the neighbor about those changes and she was happy about the changes that I did, the opposition Neighbor, so we are good to go. Okay, so yeah, you've you're, you're, you've you've made those changes as recommended by city planning. I'm not going to go through them all again, but uh, just you are you are proposing those changes. Yes. 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 Okay. Thank you. Uh, it's pretty clear what you're asking for in your application, sir. Uh, you've you've done what city planning has asked you to do. Uh, I'll just ask the committee if it, it has any questions or actually if there's anything, sir, you'd like to tell the committee that isn't contained in the material we have before us this afternoon. No, there is nothing more. Okay, thank you. Does the committee have any questions of the speaker? 
There being none, I'll go through this again. This, this application has been modified. Variance number one for the proposed rear deck projection has been uh, reduced from 3.66 meters to 3.66, pardon me, from 3.66 meters to three meters. Variance number for two for the proposed building length has been uh, reduced from 19.1 meters to 18.5 meters. Variance number five for the proposed east side yard setback has in, been increased from 0 0.61 meters to 0 0.9 meters. Variance number six for the proposed lot coverage has been reduced from 32.7% to 32%. Variance number seven for the proposed roof eaves encroachment has been eliminated. Variance number eight for the proposed building depth has been eliminated. And variance number nine for the proposed west side yard setback has been eliminated as well. And those are the changes that were recommended by, by planning. Uh, does the committee have, uh, can I get a motion on this revised application, please? Mr. Kahn? Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, variance one and two has been modified as you have stated and variance number seven, eight, and nine has been eliminated as you have stated. I'm just reading and taking this uh, recommendation from the staff that the proposal be developed substantially in accordance with the site plan drawings submitted to the Committee of Adjustment on February 16, 2022, attachment one to this report. And with further forestry conditions, I move this application be approved. Thank you, Mr. Khan. Someone to second that, Ms. Sankar seconds. All those in favor? The motion carries unanimously. Sir, your revised application has been unanimously approved subject to city planning conditions. Thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, we're now on item number 11, 206, the bridal path. I have two people registered to speak. The uh, agent is a James <laughs> Pepper. Are you there, sir? Mr. P Mr. Pfeffer, are you there? James Pfeffer? Can you hear me? Yes, uh, I can This hear is you, James sir. Pfeffer. Can I get your full name and address? Yeah, I'm James Pfeffer of 3 Bridgman Avenue, Toronto, Ontario, M4S1L4. Okay, thank you, sir. I've been going through your file. I note that the only condition we have on, uh, from staff is a recommended urban forestry condition. Uh, we have one other person uh, registered to speak, sir, so if you'd like to give us a brief presentation on what you see as the merits of your proposal. Yeah, certainly. <laughs> and I had a presentation booklet sent into the committee. Uh, maybe Adam can pull that up. Um, so this, present, this uh, proposal is a variation. There's actually a different booklet, Adam. This uh, is a very... What we were here last year in front of the committee with a very similar proposal, but at that time there were some staff concerns as well as concerns uh, by a couple of the neighbors about uh, primarily the third story. Those staff concerns have been addressed and planning has no concerns about this. Um, we have letters of support from seven neighbors, uh, two neighbors immediately across the street at 203 and 205 the bridal path. Uh, 16 Suncrest and 5 Salonica, which are very near neighbors, as well 32 Salonica, 181 the Bridal Path, and 6 Peebles. We've got a lot of neighbor support. We've done a lot of outreach, and I personally delivered neighbors to everyone who will be getting uh, the notice of hearing. So we've done a lot of work on this proposal. If you can take a look at the front elevation of the house on the booklet that we presented, Adam, it's a different booklet than this. Um, we're looking for right now. Okay. So one thing I'll say is that this is a, a two and a half story house. It has two stories and the third story is less than half of the area of the second story. And I know uh, one of the neighbors has expressed concern about the third story. When you see the, the elevations of the front of the house, you'll see that the third story only presents is some small dormers. And I would like to tell the committee that if it has, if it shares these concerns about the third story, they can impose the condition that 
and this is in a letter I sent in, the gross floor area of the third story shall not exceed 175 square meters, and in no case shall be no more than 50% of the floor area of the second story. So I'm inviting the committee to limit the third floor to half of the area of the second story to make to make sure that this is a real two and a half story house. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> we've taken great care to design a house which is very much in keeping with the green and open character of the houses in the Glen Orkey neighborhood. We have way more soft landscaping than what is actually required by the zoning bylaw. If uh, we did have our site plan up, you'd be able to see all of that green space around all sides of the house. We're actually replacing a house that has a driveway into a two-car garage as well as a circular driveway on the other frontage with one straight-in driveway. Uh, there's technical reasons for the side yard landscaping uh, variants that we're seeking uh, and planning, as I've said, has no concerns about them. We're really providing way more soft landscaping than required. So there you can see uh, the site plan. You can see all that green. Now, most of the concerns that the neighbors have are about the third story. So I'm just going to dive right in and show you some three-story buildings in the neighborhood. We can go to the next page, Adam. This is a house. It's three stories. It was approved by the Committee of Adjustment. And it's very nearby. You can see in an inset map in the left-hand corner. The next house is uh, 19 Royal Oak. This was approved by the OMB. And at the OMB, the issue was raised about the character of the neighborhood being changed by a three-story house such as this. And the OMB said that houses of this type are so prevalent in the neighborhood that the character of the neighborhood will not be changed by this type of house, which is very similar to what we're proposing, except 19 the bridal path or 19 Royal Oak had a very extensive third story attic. The next page shows a, a house that's basically like touches the corner of our lot. Again, you can see this is a three story house. You can see in the inside, it's right next door to the subject property. This is the house right next door. If you can go to the next page, Adam, on the same block, again, you can see that three-story presentation to the street, really right next door to what we're proposing. The next page, right across the street, 206 The Bridal Path, the same kind of two and a half story presentation. Sir, summarize, very please? similar to what we're proposing. Yeah, so what we're proposing is very much, and this is right next door, is very much in keeping with the neighborhood. We've got planning support. We're very, you know, we've really worked hard to make this a house that's going to fit into the Glen Orkey context. Okay, thank and I'd be you. happy to take any questions. Thank you. Does the committee have any questions of the speaker? Mr. Khan? Thank you, Mr. Chair. My question to Mr. Chamber is, sir, when your first application was refused by the committee on October 21st, 2021. Your all 10 vari variances are nearly the same as you, it, it was rejected then. So how do we understand that this is a modified or rectified uh, submission and we should consider it for approval? Well, I think there's several things that are different about this application. Uh, this time around, we're coming to you with seven letters of support from people in the community, which we didn't have before. And we've done significant outreach to all of the neighboring people. Um, we have, and this time we have planning support, which we didn't have before. And we have planning support because we did work extensively with the planner to make significant changes to the house. So what we've done is we have reduced the length of the house east-west we have significantly improved the front yard setback to the bridal path, and we've reduced the lot coverage. So those changes cumulatively satisfied the planner. And as well, we made significant, we made changes to increase the amount of soft landscaping both on the site and where the variance for the side yard landscaping is required, which as I said, is very much a technicality. So I think all of the, so we have made significant changes. We've got a lot more support from the neighborhood. We've got support from the planner. There were issues before with urban forestry, which have been addressed. 
So we're really coming uh, at you both significantly more prepared and with a lot more support uh, generally for this proposal. Okay, thank you. Mr. Chamber, there was, there was a no staff recommendation at this time. No. That's correct. Uh, we, we worked through this very carefully with the staff and they have no concerns. Okay, thank you. Does the uh, committee have any further questions? We'll go to the next person on the list. I have a uh, Jafar Hussein. Are you there? Mr. Hussein, are you there? Mr. Hussein, Hello. Mr. Hussein, are you there? Yes, I'm here. Can I get your I'm full here. Name? Can I get your full name and address, please? My full name is Jaffer Hussein, and my address is 36 Suncrest Drive. Okay, if you'd like to give us your thoughts on this application. Sure. So I've, I've looked at the variances, and first of all, thank you very much for letting me speak here. Uh, I've looked at the variances, and generally some minor improvements have been made, but the, our main concern last year was uh, that the height of the building and what's happened in the application this time, that the height has, in fact, instead of being reduced, has actually been increased by 0 0.41 meters. And that's a big concern to us because this location is at the top of the hill, and, and to have a, such a tall building there is not only going to block views, but also going to block the sun and impact the privacy of some of the neighbors. So that, that is a big concern, and that was a concern back in October, and still a big, uh, even bigger concern now because the height is so much more. And we therefore request that the Committee of Variance uh, not approve this variance. Okay, thank you, sir. Does the committee have any questions of the speaker? We'll go back to uh, Mr. Pfeffer. Are you there, sir? One of our booklet. Yes, Mr. Pfeffer, are you there? I am. If I could get Adam to turn to page one of our booklet. Uh, yeah, yeah. So the height of the house has not, in fact, increased. Uh, the height variance that's being sought is uh, to the old bylaw, which is, as you've heard earlier today, out the door or on its way out the door. Um, what we and planning has no objections to it. What we had last time is we had an eave at the roof line where the, the roof projected beyond the walls and we had an eave. In this case, the roof is behind a kind of a parapet, project, parapet projection. So the old bylaw took a midpoint measurement. Now the midpoint has moved up, but the top of the roof has not moved up. As I said, planning has absolutely no concerns with the heights. Uh, and I'm very familiar with this neighborhood and the topography of the site is very gentle. I think it's quite misleading to say that this is the top of a hill, which is going to have some impact on the neighbors uh, just because of the siting of this project. I mean, it's, it's a very flat area, Glen Orkey. Uh, the neighbors immediately across the streets have signed letters of non-objection. They are not concerned about shading. Towards the very back of our booklet, we have a view of the houses to the, the, sh the significant screening on the house to the west, which, uh, yeah, right there, which with all that screening, you know, that house is not gonna be affected. And you can see on the upper left-hand corner, the top of that roof on the house immediately to the east is actually a full half meter. We had it uh, shot by our surveyor. In absolute terms, it's a full half meter higher than the top of the roof that we're proposing. Um, so no privacy concerns, as you can see from this yard. I mean, extensive screening to the people on the same block. The people across the street have signed letters of support. There's no concerns about shading, um, you know, and yeah, and the, the type of building that we're proposing, two and a half story, is absolutely a prevalent type in this neighborhood. No concerns from planning, lots of support from the neighborhood. Thank you. Thank you. Does the committee have any questions of the speaker? Could I get a motion on this application, please? Ms. Sankar? Well, through you, Mr. Chair, you know, I, I, 
I've heard the explanations provided by the agent here today. And um, I do agree. I do agree that um, this is appropriate for the development of this property and, and the region, the area that, it, that it's located. So for that reason, I'm going to put forward a motion to approve this application. I'm going to um, make it subject to forestry, conditions one and two of forestry. Um, there are no other uh, concerns. And so for, uh, for that reason, that's my motion. Okay, thank you, Ms. Sankar. Someone to second that? Mr. Kidd seconds. All those in favor? Opposed? Mr. Khan dissenting. Uh, Ms. Sankar's motion carries. Uh, sir, your application has been approved subject to urban forestry conditions. Thank you very much. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, we'll just take a brief break. Whoa!
How would they even get in here, Simon? Ladies and gentlemen, committee's back in session. We are now on item number 12, 151 Rosewell Avenue. I have three people registered to speak. The agent is Bill Ross. Are you there, Mr. Ross? Bill Ross, are you there? Bill, go ahead. Mr. Ross, are you there? Mr. Ross, are you there? Mr. Chair, members, Bill is present on the call. He is unmuted, so he can speak. No. Uh, we'll give him another shot here, but if, uh, if we can't make it work, maybe we'll have him no. log out. Okay, so we'll, Bill, if you could log out and log back in and make sure you authorize your microphone, we'll... Uh, We'll be able to hear you in a moment. Yeah, we'll, uh, we'll come back to, we'll go to the next item on the list. Item number 13, 36 Glen Grove Avenue East. I have two people registered to speak. The agent is a Jillian Amos, A-I-M-I-S. Are you there? Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Can I get your full name? Pardon me, can I get your full name and address, please? Ms. Amos, are you there? Pardon me. Mr. Chair, uh, unfortunately, Jillian just muted herself. Uh, uh, Jillian and everyone else participating on the call, please don't mute or unmute yourself. Please let city staff be responsible for this. Ms. Amos, are can you, you hear there? me now? Yes, hello? Yes, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear yes. you. Yes, can you hear me? Yes. Okay, sorry. Um, my address is 626 Friar Hill Avenue in Toronto, and I'm the agent for 36 Glen Grove Avenue East. Okay, thank you. I'm uh, just going through your file. I note that there was a, a condition from urban forestry and there's a report from the Toronto Region Conservation Authority dated the 1st of March of uh, this year. They had no objections to your application. I, I note that uh, we, have, uh, we have a couple of people are interest on, interested in this application, madam. So if you, if you could give us a brief presentation on what you see as the merits of your proposal. 
Yes, sure. Um, so basically, this project began as a renovation to the existing 70-year-old house in 2019. And my clients have lived at this property for 17 years and constructed the ex existing second-story additions that you can see in the photo. Uh, TRCA had concerns regarding the long-term stability of this existing structure on the ravine slope. So um, my clients hired a geotechnical engineer to study the soil and existing house foundation, and it was determined that they did not extend deep enough to secure the house long-term on the slope. Um, as you can see from the, the plans, that most of the house extends past the stable top of the bank, and TRCA was in favor of the house being rebuilt with helical piles to secure it long term on the slope. Their condition was that we rebuild the house on the same footprint as the existing house for the portion north of the long term stable top of slope line that was determined by the geotechnical engineer. The variances we're requesting are all existing with the current house and this is why we are seeking the front and rear yard variances as well as the rear deck projection variance. Um, Chris, if you could go to the, the next photo, the location. Oh, um, can you go again to the, there's a location map that I have in there. Oh, I think there was a different one that I had sent in. Um, I think it's dated March 2nd. I don't know if you see it there. Well, on, on the location map, um, you can see that the existing property is unique, that it doesn't have any neighbors to the east, west, or north. It's almost like an island. Um, and it's um, the property is also unique in that it's very wide, about approximately 38 meters wide, yet the depth is only 21 meters, which triggers the front and rear yard variances. And the, um, the road, if you go, Chris, to the location map, please. Yeah, keep, we have it up. We'll have it up in a second, so keep going. Okay, sure. So on the location map, um, just just west of the property, um, you there's a small road. There we go. There's a small road, Glengrove, uh, just to on the west side of the property. That road there is actually a private road, um, and it, there's no access to the property from this road. So there's no neighbors that are affected by the front or rear yard variances or the rear platform deck projection. And for the rear deck projection variance request, we are replacing like for like as approved by TRCA and are reducing the depth by 71 centimeters from the existing deck, which if, if you go, Chris, two more slides. Yes, that's the existing deck. So basically we're replacing that, um, but we're shortening it by 21 centimeters. Um, and I just would also like to note that since this house is on on a slope that the only accessible backyard space um, is deck space. There's no other way to access the backyard. Um, we, as, as you know, we have the, I think a strong letter of support from TRCA and we also have signatures of support from numerous neighbors living on this small dead end street. And um, so I, I think that the variances we requested are number one, the the irregular nature of the lot being being um, not very shallow and also um, the existing condition of the house and the requirement of TRCA to maintain the existing footprint for the new house um, as they don't want us to do any more damage to the slope um, when we reinforce the structure with the new house. Okay, thank you, Madam. Does the uh, committee have any questions of the speaker? Mr. Khan? Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, my question to the madam is variance number four. Portion of the building to located below stable top bank. How much is that? The portion that's below the stable top of bank. Okay, so Chris, if you could go to the um, the, the that presentation I just had, the slide. I think the second slide with the site plan. So on the site plan, you can see, a, yes, right where Chris's cursor is, you can see that, that dash line right there. Yes, that whole line. That line is the, um, well, that line isn't, 
that line's actually was set out by the geotechnical engineer when he studied the soil and um, in, and the, the long-term stable slope of the 100-year erosion line of the house, it was determined that that was the long-term stable top of slope line. So, so that whole portion north of that line is all in the ravine, but I'd like to note that this existing house is basically this footprint. So we're, we're not expanding on anything. And we were, it started out this project that we were gonna do a renovation and the existing foundations weren't stable for a long-term house. And so TRCA was very in favor of the house being rebuilt properly with very, very deep helical piles to secure the, the new house. Okay. Does that answer? Okay, thank you, madam. Any further questions of the speaker? Yeah, uh, sir, I, I just wanted to, you will be rebuilding the new foundation on the same existing uh, foundation? Um, so when you say on the same existing foundation, we are removing the existing foundation and replacing it with a new foundation that will be more secure and extend deeper into the ground because the existing foundation, there's no ba basement on this existing house. So the existing foundations don't go very far into the ground. And it was determined that with um, erosion that the house would eventually one day slide into the ravine. So the um, we've been working very extensively with TRCA back and forth. And we've had since 2019 and they they want us to use the exact same footprints so that we do not do any damage to any other part of the ravine and that we replace like for like so we're not able to add any more area um or any more space uh just re 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 replace what's there um and so that's what we've done so even with the deck at the back everything we have done and had approval from them in order for them to write the the letter of support that they have written. Thank you, thank you. Thank you. Uh, go to the, uh, no further questions of the speaker. I'll go to the next person on the list. I have a Des or Marion Leyland. Are you there? Des or Marion Leyland, are you there? Hello, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Can I get your full name and address, please? Yes, I'm speaking on behalf of myself and my wife, Marion Leyland. I am Des Leyland at 24 Glengrove Avenue East. And we live on the private road that was referred to a little earlier. Okay, thank you. If you'd like to give us your thoughts on this application. Certainly. And uh, I am not, I have not seen the TRCA report. And also there was a reference from the agent that they had consulted people on the private road, we, we were never consulted. So uh, I don't perhaps have all the information uh, that I might wish to have. So I can just please bear that in mind. Um, our perspective on this project um, is related to the ravine and its impact on the ravine. Not so much uh, its dimensions if it was located elsewhere. Uh, it is right on the ravine, we see it and we cherish the ravine and its natural setting. Um, we experience the ravine every day. We use the front of our house, which overlooks the ravine uh, nightly. We have done so since the pandemic started. We'd rediscovered it. We always have used the ravine in our front yard, um, but we stopped using our backyard uh, for reasons I won't go into. Um, and so we actually spent an hour or two overlooking the ravine and are just uh, completely addicted to it. It's a wonderful, wonderful ravine, and it's nice to look inside the ravine and see tennis courts and so on. So it's a perfect balance of urban and countryside. Um, the, the, the concern we have, and by the way, the, 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 we had not even, not only not objected, we had not interfered at all with the two uh, compartments that were put on either side of the house. We understood that because it doesn't have a basement that they would want to have more living space. We we like to let neighbors do as they wish within the uh, guidelines. Uh, so we don't um, object lightly. But our concern is the impact this this project 
will have with regards to the ravine. It'll be bigger, taller. Uh, it'll interfere with the sight lines. There will be more light. And it's, it's not their fault, of course, but it's right on the ravine. And it is right within the scope of our, of our view, but not so much just our view, but the experience of the ravine. We, uh, I, I have done a lot of work with respect to preserving the ravine as best I can. We've been in contact with the TRCA over many years to try to bolster it. It hasn't happened, but we do try to do things ourselves and we maintain the lane. I coordinate that for our whole neighborhood. Um, and I, I, my concern is there is a property there. I was not aware that there is a problem with the footings of the house. It does not have a basement, but it must have a foundation uh, that supports it. I'm not aware that it's slid or cracked or anything like that. Um, you know, it's a it's a decent looking house. Presumably, to, you know, people have lived in it for uh, many, many years. Our, our objection is not so much their intent or the specifics, but we, are, you know, I've I've read the balcony uh, or, or 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 a deck is going to protrude out, and they've asked for a variance on that. There is a large imposition on the ravine from our standpoint, and while we do wish the best to everyone who wants to improve their house, to have a completely new dwelling there on the ravine, right essentially adjacent to the slope, um, is something that we're very, very uncomfortable with. While, as I say, we, we do so, we say this reluctantly because we generally try to support neighbors. Okay, thank you. That's, that's, that's the sum of it. Did, uh, I, I take it you didn't, did you have an opportunity to read the TRCA report that's contained in their file? No, I, I uh, when I got the notice uh, from the city, uh, I went to the file and looked through the drawings, but I did not see a report. Perhaps I missed it, but I did it's not it. see it there. It's in the online version. It's dated March 1st. They have no objections to the proposal. They've gotten all their technical studies and uh, they have no objections to the proposal. Anyway, I will go back to, does the committee have any questions of the speaker? There being none, I'll go back to uh, the agent. Ms. Amos, are you there? Can you hear me? Yes, I'm here. Yes, I can um, hear you. I, You've heard the comments yes. from uh, Mr. Yes, Leyland? I have. Yes, I have. Um, Mr. Leyland, I'm I, I'm sorry. I wish you had um, reached out. We could have explained this proposal to you to assure you how it would not um, affect your use of the ravine. My my clients have been living in this property for 17 years, and they love the ravine and cherish it as you do. And um, the the footprint at the back of the house is and the of the house is going to be exactly the same. So there's not going to be any further obstruction and uh, of your view of the ravine and in fact the ravine is really more to the north of this property well we're on the ravine but it so it's not going to impact it and the the um the variance of the rear um the the rear deck is actually going to be less than what is there now so if you if we look back at the photos um on the photo number but that photo right there that these photos here, it, we're actually, we're decreasing it by 71 centimeters. So we're, we're decreasing it. And where the, um, the garages um, of the house is going to have a green roof. And I'd also like to point out where we've been extremely sensitive to the environmental impacts of this project. And um, that is one of the reasons why this house is being rebuilt. And, and I want to clarify that the existing house foundations are not are not, are not cracking. That's not the issue. The issue is that um, my client was going to do some renovations to the house and they were met with reluctance from TRCA and roadblocks um, because with the soil studies, um, it was just, it was determined that the existing house is not stable long-term. And so the, um, the investments that my clients were wanting to put into the house, it, it's important that the house is going to be safe long-term for everybody and not do any further damage to the ravine. So um, in, in addition, not that this matters for, for, for what we're doing um, in terms of the zoning, but 
We, my clients are also building um, a high efficiency house. Uh, where they're adding, we have green roofs and um, this house is actually gonna have much better um, environmental impacts on the ravine. It, it's going to be, um, you know, uh, very, very energy efficient and the, um, it's going to be less obtrusive, really, than what they what is there now. We're not asking for any height variances. The um, the rear the rear deck variance um, the existing is worse. The 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 rear yard um, variance is exactly what we have now because we TRC said that we have to maintain the existing footprint and, as well as the front yard variance. And um, I, I'm you know I'm happy to always go through this with you just to reassure you that it will not impact your enjoyment of the ravine. Okay, thank you, madam. Does the uh, committee have any questions of the speaker? There being none, could I get a motion on this application, please? Mr. Kidd? Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, having uh, listened to the explanation from the, uh, uh, from the agent, I'm, I'm convinced that the uh, proposed variances uh, meet the, uh, the four tests for minor variance. And I'd like to put forward a motion to accept the application subject to forestry condition. Thank you, Mr. Kidd. Someone to second that. Ms. Sankar seconds. All those in favor? That motion carries unanimously. Madam, your application has been unanimously approved subject to urban forestry conditions. Thank you very much. Thank you. We'll go back to item number 12, 151 Rosewell Avenue. Uh, the agent is Bill Ross. Are you there? Go ahead, Bill. Mr. Ross, are you there? Bill Ross, are you there? Mr. Chair, members, Bill is on the call and he is unmuted. I'm not totally sure what's uh, what the issue is this time. Mr. Ross, are you there? Mr. Chair, maybe we'll step this file down to the, okay. the last item. Bill, if you can hear me, if you could... Um, Go ahead and send me an email. Um, okay, we'll go to item number We'll four. try and chit chat about what might be going wrong on your end. Go to item number 14, 389 Manor Road East. I have two people registered to speak. The agent. Mr. Chair, you'll note on the our list that there is an agent and it also notes that an agent hasn't registered to speak. Oh. Um, what we'll do is maybe we'll call upon William uh, Juanu first, who is listed as an agent. Okay. And we'll Come confirm on. whether or not they are here to speak about the file, if they are the agent, and if they're not, we'll bring we'll bring the uh, the potential owners on. Okay. Uh, William Giano, you there? Are you there? Hello. Yes. Hello. Can I get your full name and address, please? Can you hear me okay? This is William Joannu, the agent. Sir, we're having trouble hearing you. I don't know what to do. I see I'm unmuted. I don't know why you can't hear me. William, we can hear you, but it's very muffled. Your original hello was very crisp and clear and loud, and you've since done something to either move your mouth farther away from your speaker or whatnot, but you've just become more muffled in the last moment or two. Okay, I'm actually sitting very close to the speaker. Can you hear me all right? It's very difficult, sir. We'll try, we'll try and proceed, but it's hard to hear. Um, Do you want to give me a telephone uh, call instead? No, no, we'll just proceed. We'll just do our best. Make sure you just speak loudly, and we'll do our best yes, to, to go forward here. Okay. I just want to say, sir, I've gone through your file. Uh, there is a report from city planning dated the 1st of March. They have no objections to your application, but they recommend increasing variance number four regarding the proposed rear yard soft landscaping from 21.7% to 40.5%. And what I wanted to ask sir, is they indicate that that was agreed to by, by, uh, by you. So I'm going to ask, uh, do you want to increase variance number four, the rear soft yard landscaping? Yes, I had submitted uh, uh, detailed sketch and calculations, which were accepted by community planning. And uh, based on that sketch, uh, I agreed to uh, 
change that variance uh, upwards. Okay, so so if I can if I can add then, sir, variance number four is being changed. It currently reads the proposed rear yard soft landscaping area is 21.7 percent. That's being changed from uh, increased from 21.7 percent to 40.5 percent. Is that correct? That's correct. We uh, agreed to cut back an existing or a new proposed wood deck to be much smaller than the existing one, and we shrank it yet again. So that was a fair agreement with uh, planning. Okay, thank you. Uh, it's pretty, uh, that being the case, it's pretty clear what you're asking for and the, uh, the variances that you have before us. I'll just ask, sir, is there anything you'd like to tell the committee that isn't contained in the material that, you've, uh, that, ha that we have before us this afternoon? Uh, only just a few items. Uh, it's a growing family, very tight street, tight lot, tight setbacks as existing. And we've tried our best to achieve uh, a reasonable garage, rear deck, and maintaining as much green space as possible. And the entire side yard of, uh, of this property, which is mostly city property, is uh, just um, swamped with plants and trees and uh, things that the uh, owners um, maintain uh, for the loss of a little bit of green space here and there. And um, we think this is a very approvable proposal on our side. And we would hope that you feel the same way and uh, support us. Okay. Thank you very much, sir. Just ask the committee. Thank does you. The, does the committee have any questions of the speaker? There being none, could I get a motion on this revised application? Please note that variance number four has been increased. The rear soft yard landscape is, landscaping has been increased from 21.7% to 40.5% as recommended by planning. So if I could get a motion on this revised application, please. Mr. Hunt. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, having listened to the applicant and the applicant's willingness to make the uh, changes as uh, recommended by the planning report of March 1st, I would move approval of the uh, application. Thank you, Mr. Hunt. Someone to second that? Mr. Kahn seconds. All those in favor? That motion carries unanimously. Sir, your application has been unanimously approved uh, without condition. Thank you. Thank you all. Thank you. We'll go back to item number 12. No, Mr. Chair, not right now. Let's just keep going. We'll save that. Uh, we'll save item 12 for the, the, the very last one. I'm still working okay. with Bill to figure out his technical problems. Item number 15, 19 Findlay Boulevard. I have two people registered to speak. Uh, the agent is Joe Domb, D-O-M-B. Are you there? Yes. Yes, hello, sir. I just wanted to ask, I've gone through your file. I note that, oh, I've, I've noted that uh, there's two reports on file, one from Urban Forestry, a recommended condition, and there's a report from City Planning dated the 1st of March of this year. They have no objections to your application provided that the proposal is developed substantially in accordance with the north and south elevation drawings submitted to the committee and shown as attachments one and two to their report. Just wanted to ask her if you've had the opportunity to uh, review that report. Uh, yes, I have and um, we're uh, in agreement. Okay, terrific. Thank you, sir. Just wanted to ask if you could give the we have one other person registered to speak on this application, so if you could give the committee a brief presentation on what you see as the merits of your proposal, and if you could also give us your, your full name and address, please. Uh, yes, uh, my name is Joe Dome, uh, 133 Torresdale Avenue, agent for the owner. Uh, the owner would like to construct a new two-story multi-generational dwelling to suit their family needs. I'd first like to point out that variance number one pertaining to the side main wall height should be removed as the height of the side main walls now meets the bylaw at 7.5 meters. Hang, hang on, just, just a moment. Shown on. Mm -hmm. Hang on a second. Uh, you're proposing to make a change to your application? That's right. So uh, which, which variants are you eliminating? Variance number one. 
So variance number one, the height of the side exterior main walls is deleted? That's correct. Are there any other changes? Um, well, I would like to point out that um, uh, variance number three, along with variances four and five, describe uh, the same side yard setback. So variance number three describes the north and south side yard setbacks together. And then variances four and five, again, describe each side yard setback uh, individually. So um, as far as de deleting them uh, may not be necessary, but it is, it's a, a bit redundant. Yeah, I, was, I was going to ask him, I was going to ask Ms. Mr. Lamb this. Variance number three and variances four and five, either th four and five are redundant or three is redundant. Is, is that the case? They're, 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 they're stating the same thing. Yeah, in, in this case, I wouldn't, I wouldn't recommend deleting any of them. Okay, I'll, we'll just leave them. Okay, you, you've, you've, you've heard staff, sir, then, so we'll just leave them in? Mm hmm yes. Okay, if you'd like to give the committee a brief presentation on what you see as the merits of your proposal. Yes, um, so uh, taking out variance number one, um, moving on to variance number two regarding length. Um, the owner is proposing 17.98 uh, meters in length, and there are examples of greater length approved. For example, at uh, 8 Findlay Boulevard, uh, just last month in February, was approved with an 18.5 meter length, as well as shorter side yard setbacks, uh, 1.52 meters and 1.22 meters, along with a lot coverage that was actually 5% over the bylaw, whereas no lot coverage um, is sought here. Uh, 31 Norcross Road was also approved for 18.79 uh, meters. And uh, the variances uh, 3, 4, and 5 referring to the side yard setbacks of 1.52 meters on the north side and 1.79 meters on the south side are also well established, both on the street and in the uh, surrounding area. And um, I referenced number 8, Finley, and I'd like to add that number 26 was recently approved for uh, 1.2 meters as well. And 46 was approved for 1.19 meter uh, setbacks on both sides. Uh, and variances 6 and 7 refer to the uh, old bylaw. Um, the proposal meets the new bylaw for law coverage and height. And it seems that um, the neighbor opposition comment uh, regarding height is, is uh, a result of considering the old bylaw rather than the new. Uh, we do feel that the proposed dwelling uh, fits well with the existing physical character of the neighborhood, um, is reasonable and minor in nature, and uh, we would point to planning staff recommendations that you mentioned um, that should committee approve the decision be tied to the north and south elevations. I'd be uh, happy to answer any questions you may have. Thank you, sir. Does the committee have any questions of the speaker? There being none, I'll uh, go back to uh, the next speaker on the list. I have a Nicola or Anita Palazzo. Are you there? Mr. Chair and members, there's nobody on the call by the name of Nicola or Anita. Um, with that being said, there is someone on the line with uh, the similar last name. Uh, Rosie Palazzo is on the line. Yes, okay. I don't uh, want to make an assumption. It's not really appropriate, but um, maybe we'll call on her just to see if she's actually the one here who's supposed to be representing okay, these two. Uh, Ms. Palazzo, are you there? One more, Mr. Chair. Ms. Palazzo, are you there? Good now. Ms. Palazzo, are you there? Hi, this is Rosie Palazzo. Yes, hello. Hello. Yes, hello. I can hear you. Okay, you? thank you, uh, Mr. Chair. I am um, Rosie Ma Palazzo. Madam, Madam, the daughter. Ma Madam, before you speak, yes? we had... Uh, a Nicola or Anita Palazzo registered to speak. Are, are, you, are you associated with them? Yes. In my letter, I am their daughter, um, and they've authorized me to speak on their okay. behalf. Okay. Ma Madam, if you, if, you, if you could give me your full name and address then, please. Sure. My name is Rosie Palazzo. I'm at 197 Rainer Road in North York. Um, my parents, Nicola and Anita Palazzo, live at 17 Finley Boulevard. They are the immediate south side neighbors um to 19 finley boulevard okay thank you if you'd like to give us your thoughts on this application um yes so our concern is um with privacy so as you'll see on this drawing the back deck based on that because of the height and the depth of this house the back deck and um, creates um an observation deck or an overlook into um, my parents' backyard. They are avid gardeners. They're outside 
um, whenever the weather's nice, but they also do a lot of entertaining. So what this does is it creates a lack of privacy for them um, throughout the spring, summer, and, and winter months. Um, it's also not just um, the second, the, sorry, the main floor deck, but also the second story proposed deck will also create a second overlook. Um, so really their concern is privacy there. Um, the, um, um, sorry, I'm just referring back to my notes. Um, when this original um, submission, when the original plans were submitted last year, um, the um, Committee of Adjustment um, refused minor variance application. Um, and um, based on, and the height was, one of the issues was the height. At, and at the time, the proposed height was 9.46. They're currently asking for 9.64, which is 0.18 higher. Um, so the, um, there are also inconsistencies in the drawings. There is, I believe on page three of the drawings, um, it does say it's a 10 meter height, um, overall height. Um, so I'm not certain what the new um, bylaw is, but the um, letter that we received said that the maximum permitted is 8.8. .8. So this still appears to be higher than um, the current bylaw. Um, I, I, and the, um, when looking at the elevation of the house, the front elevation of the house, um, it presents as a three-story home, um, be, mainly because of the elevated basement. Um, it, that view is inconsistent with any other home in the area. Um, and um, so I did also, ha um, one of the reasons why in the last meeting it was mentioned that the elevated basement was required due to radon levels in the area, um, I'd like to ask if a radon study has been completed. If so, what were those results and do they justify the need for that elevated basement? Because that elevation is what is cre creating that the, the two observation decks, if you will, that, that um, completely deprive my parents of any privacy. Okay, madam, I just wanted to mention that with respect to the, you mentioned about the building height of 8.8 .8 meters, just the, that's that's in reference to an, an an old obsolete North York bylaw 7625, which is in the process of being repealed. But the the actual house itself complies with the new City of Toronto bylaw. So just to okay. Clarify. I was not aware the new bylaw. I'm just referencing um, the bylaw that was stated in the letter that we received. Yeah, that's that's understandable, but it's 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 technically an obsolete bylaw anyway. What I'll we'll do is some of your other comments will refer back to the agent and he can he can address those concerns. I'll just ask, does the committee have any questions of the speaker? There being none, I'll go back to the agent. Uh, Mr. Domp, are you there? Mr. Domp, are you there? Yes, I am. You've heard the comments from Ms. Palazzo. If you'd like to respond to them, please. Um, yes, uh, yes, I'd like to reiterate that, um, as you mentioned, um, the height uh, does conform to the new bylaw. Um, and there was a discrepancy on the site statistics where it mentioned the, the height as 10 meters, but it's actually um, less uh, than 10 meters. But in either case, it does conform to the uh, height. Um, the, as far as the, um, the deck concerns go, um, there, there are no variances associated with the deck or balcony, and um, there actually is a um, significant separation of uh, side yard setbacks between uh, number 19 and number 17. As you can see on that side, um, at least for the, the dwelling itself, it's 1.79 uh, meters, and then another significant setback um, toward number 17. So we feel that this does mitigate uh, privacy um, somewhat. Um, and uh, yeah, once again, there's, there's no variance um, associated with the, the deck or the uh, balcony. And uh, we do believe that, um, uh, you know, due to the previous application that was brought before uh, committee and refused, you know, there's a bit of friction generated with uh, adjacent neighbor. Unfortunately, uh, you know, it's not always possible to satisfy all parties, but we do feel that the revised application uh, with these substantially improved uh, variances over the previous application do reflect uh, the reasonableness 
um, of the application. And um, I, I would like to mention regarding the third story um, concerns, um, that was present in the previous application, but that's not something that, um, that is being sought here. And primarily before it was, it, was, um, it could be considered more technical in nature um, even before, but that being said, um, uh, that has been addressed and uh, planning um, doesn't have any concerns. Okay, thank you, sir. Does the uh, committee have any questions of the speaker? Could I get a motion on this application, please? P please note that variance number one has been deleted, and that's the with respect to the proposed height of the side exterior main walls facing a side lot line. That's been that has been deleted. So, if I could get a motion on the revised application, please, Mr. Kidd. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, I think the proposal, as amended, uh, uh, um, it meets the four tests for minor variance set out in the Planning Act. Uh, I'd like to put forward a motion to accept the application uh, with the revision that uh, uh, variance number one is to be eliminated. And uh, also with the condition that the proposal be developed substantially in accordance with the north elevation and south elevation drawings submitted to the Committee of Adjustment and attached as attachment one and two to the report uh, dated, uh, this is the planning staff report dated March 1st, 2022, and also subject to uh, forestry condition. Thank you, Mr. Kidd. Someone to second that, Ms. Sankar seconds. All those in favor? That motion carries unanimously, sir. Your application has been unanimously approved, Suburban Forestry and City Planning Conditions. Thank you very much. Thank you. We'll go to uh, item number 16, 24 Lee Croft Crescent. I have one person registered to speak. That's the agent, Peter Higgins. Are you there, sir? Mr. Yes, Higgins. Mr. Chairman, I am here. Yes, hi, Mr. Higgins. Again, I have to, I have to ask you for your name and address. Of course. <clears throat> Excuse me. Peter James Higgins of Peter Higgins Architect Incorporated, uh, 124, uh, oh boy, 124 Merton Street, Suite 204. My apologies, okay, thank you, Toronto. Sir. Just wanted to ask, um, there's a report on file with your application dated uh, the 1st of March from City Planning and they have a recommendation that you modify variance number one regarding the lot coverage from 38.59% to under 35%. Did you want to do that, sir? Uh, we are aware of it, and we've been dealing with the, um, uh, the planning staff, um, in particular Denise McMullen, for some time. And um, sh we have reduced the coverage, but not to the level that she uh, requested. So that is uh, one of the first things I'd like to say is that the the coverage that we are seeking has been reduced to 37.65%. Okay. Uh, that is, you may want that's to, number one. Okay, so variance number one, uh, which states the proposed lot coverage is 38.59% of the lot area has been reduced from 38.59% to 37.65%. That's correct. Okay, and uh, I just, <coughs> just want to say, sir, it's pretty clear what you're asking for in the three, var three variances we have before us. So I'll just ask, is there anything that uh, you'd like to tell the committee that isn't contained in the material that we have before us this afternoon? Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Yes, I'll be very brief. Um, at my suggestion, uh, my clients, Hui Ping, Lu, and uh, Joey He, took our architectural packages and knocked on the 18, excuse me, 17 doors in the neighborhood. And um, they received six uh, signbacks of no objection. And those are from 22, 23, 26. 31, 33, and 48 Lee Croft, of which 22, 26, and 48 are immediate neighbors to the north, the south, and to the rear, rear corner. Um, everyone seemed to be fine. A number of people uh, expressed their, um, their happiness that a new house was being built so that the property values would go, on, go up, but those are the letters that we have on file. 
We have six. There is examples in the immediate neighborhood of the high 36 and the um, up to 37.94, in fact, uh, on Larkfield, 37.8 on Banbury. And I know you don't go by um, those kinds of things, but at the same time, I would like to make the point, if you can bring up the front facade, please, that the the house has been designed so that it has very large side yard setbacks well in it in uh, well beyond the minimum required. Um, the roof has a very slight um, variance to the very topmost part. That's due to the required upper roof slope of uh, 10%. And I wanted you to know there are no dormers, there are no gables, there are no um, high walls with the exception of the chimney, which is allowed to be um, higher than the roof, should be higher than the roof. Uh, so overall, the scale of the house is well within the typical um, new builds in the neighborhood of which there have been a substantial number. And we think that the uh, reduction down to 37.65, um, along with the elimination of a circular driveway so that we had no variance to the soft landscaping in the front yard, uh, the large setbacks, the minimal number of, of variances, and no gables or dormers on the sides that we have before you, something uh, design that is um, has been designed to, to not only work with the neighborhood and the immediate neighbors, but also to minimize its impact because it is not a tall looking building, even though the roof has a slight variance to it. The roof is designed with that variance to give it a reasonable balance to the amount of wall space that we have below. And that wall space is uh, well within the allowable uh, wall height. Okay, thank you, sir. Does the uh, committee have any questions of the speaker? Being none, could I get a motion on this revised application? Please note that variance number one regarding the lot coverage has been uh, reduced from 38.59% to 37.65%. So if I could get a variance on this revised application, please. Could I get a motion on this revised application? Thank you, Ms. Sankar. Ms. Sankar? I figured you meant to say uh, motion. Um, yeah, in reviewing this application, you know, I, I did see the need to, um, that this lot coverage was indeed high for the area. I did take note of the Don Mills Association letter, which asks for that reduction as well. And on the advice of uh, staff, that's what I would propose as well. So I will motion to approve this application, but I will make a change to variance number one so that the lot coverage is reduced to 35% as per staff's recommendations. And it will also be... Um, that's the there only is no correction in this, so that's it. Thank you. That's my motion. Someone to second Ms. Sankar's motion. Mr. Hunt seconds. All those in favor? That motion carries unanimously. Sir, your, appli your application has been, uh, has been approved, but with variance number one changed to read the lot coverage uh, from 38.59% to 35%. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. All the best. We're now on, can we, Mr. Wills, can we go back to 151 Rosewell Avenue? Any luck there? Mr. Chair, I can't guarantee you right now at this time that okay. we've got a connection with Bill Ross yet. Okay, thank you. I'll go. We can give it a shot though. I, I see him on here, so we can give it a shot though. Okay. Uh, we'll try item number 12, 151 Rosewell Avenue. I'm looking for Bill Ross. Are you there? Hello? Yes, Mr. Ross, are you Hello? there? Hello? We, Hello. We can hear you, Bill. We can hear you. Mr. Okay. Ross? Yes. Yes. Can I get your full name and address, please? It's Bill Ross, number nine, Beswick Lane, Uxbridge, Ontario. Okay. Thank you, sir. Mr. Ross, I note in your file that the only comment we have from staff is from Urban Forestry, a recommended condition. We have two other persons who would like to speak to this application. So if you'd like to give us a brief presentation on what you see as the merits of your proposal. Yes, sir. 
Uh, we're only asking for uh, two variances now. Uh, one is the uh, floor space index, uh, point, uh, 0.73, where the bylaw permits 0. 0.6. This is for a small two-story addition at the rear of the property. The uh, actual footage it's covering is about uh, 250 square feet on the first floor and 250 on the second floor. And that's basically where this extra GFA is located. The other uh, item we're looking for is the uh, e, the roof eave projection. The existing house, uh, like we're keeping uh, the majority of the existing house. So uh, the existing house is located at a foot away from the side property line. Fifteen. I'm sorry. Continue, uh, continue, Bill. Yeah, the um, the second variance we're looking for is a. a, a side yard setback for the eave only on the existing portion of the building at the present time there's only a one foot side yard there and we're looking to project the, our eave out into that side yard uh, towards the property line that's basically the same location that the eave is located on the existing building and we're just going up uh, four or five feet of, of a wall, and we're just relocating that eave to the next level up. And we're not crossing over the property line because I think the existing one actually crosses over the property line. Um, in any case, that, that's the two variances we're looking for. With the house itself, uh, I would say that we comply with the building length, we comply with the side yard requirements, we require we comply with um, and everything else on the on the property. Basically, that's the only two variances we're looking for: is a little extra gross floor area and uh, the side yard variance for the eave on the one side. Okay, thank you, sir. Does the committee have any questions of the speaker? There being none, I'll go to the next person we have on the list. I have a Hamid Amami. Are you there? Hamid Amami, are you there? Uh, yes, sir. Yes, can I get your full name and address, please, sir? Uh, yeah, Hamid Amami, 11 Hatan Avenue. Okay, if you'd like to give us your thoughts on this application, please. No, uh, Mr. Chair, I'm the designer, and I'm here. If Bill was not available in any case, then I can speak and represent the project. Okay, well, if, if you'd like if you'd like to, uh, Mr. Wills, I'm sorry, are you going to add something? Yeah, no, Mr. Chair, he was just highlighting that he's actually the designer for this file. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Unfortunately, again, there was a note that wasn't flagged in our list of participants today. Okay. And, um, yeah, he's not an area resident that wants to speak for or against the file. He's just the designer. Um, but the agent overall for this file is Bill Ross, so we'll just stick with Bill. Well, I will. Thank you. I'm sorry, Mr. Amami, sorry. Uh, go to the next person on the list. I have a Lillian and uh, and Darius. Are you there? Mr. Chair, it's Darius that will be speaking. Okay, so hello, sir. Can I get your name and address, please? Hello there. Yes, hello. Can I get your name and address, please? Hello. Yeah, hello. Uh, we are on air, and today we are only for listening. Uh, and my agent, Mr. Ross, uh, talk, uh, uh, I appreciate from uh, committee and my agent. Okay. Are they the they're the owners? Mr. Chair, it seems like they are the owners. Okay. All right. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. Then. Thanks, Mr. Wills. No problem. Uh, so we have. Uh, we'll go back to Mr. Ross. Mr. Ross, uh, there's, there's no other persons registered to speak. Uh, it's pretty clear what you're asking for. I'll just ask the committee if it has any questions. There being no questions, if I could get a motion on this application, please. Mr. Kahn. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Although there are no staff recommendations, 
I find this application has minor variances, complies with the zoning bylaw, and I move it for approval with policy Thank conditions. Thank you, Mr. Kahn's. Uh Someone to second that? Ms. Sankar seconds. All those in favor? That motion carries. This application is approved subject to urban forestry conditions. Thank you, sir. We're now Thank on you. item number 17. Uh, no, 17 was the third. 18. 18. Item number 18, 349 Ellerslie Avenue. Okay. I have one person registered to speak, and I don't have a last name here. A uh, person's first name is Kamyar. Are you there? Yes, speaking. Um, yes, hello. Can I get your full name and address, please? Sure. My name is Kamyar Kozeme. I'm representing the owner of this property. My address is 16 Hazelwood. Okay. Okay, thank you, sir. I note that there's a couple of uh, reports on file with this application. I hope you've read them. There's one from city planning dated the 1st of March of this year. They had no objections to your application, provided that the proposal is developed substantially in accordance with the site elevation east and site elevation west drawing submitted to the committee and shown as attachment one and two to their report. There's also a report from Transportation Services dated the 1st of March of this year, and it's recommending refusing your proposed driveway access on Ellerslie. And uh, I wanted to know, uh, in view of that recommendation for a refusal, did you want to defer this application to discuss this issue with transportation, or did you want to proceed with this application today? I, I, um, if, have you had sorry. the have you have you had the opportunity to read that transportation services report? Uh, yes, and we provide a presentation that, if you don't mind, I can share on the screen. So you'd sure. like to proceed today? Uh, yes, please. Okay. All right. Uh, then, if you could give us a uh, presentation on what you see as the merits of your proposal, specifically with respect to the the driveway issue. Sure, sure. Okay, I go quickly on the other items um, and mo mostly emphasize on the driveway. So can you go to the next slide? This is just showing the size of the project. So the, that's the main, um, that we found many precedent in the area that we have access from Flan Street. And then the most, uh, the closest one is this house on the other side of the street that it shows the exist the Curb side curb cut is from the this street, and if is you look at the image, you can see that there is our, already a curb cut, which is marked with the um, red arrow on the right. And if you go to the other one, other page, please. Um, this is an image showing that curb cut that. What we did on, in this application, we tried to push the access as far as possible from the main street, uh, same as the neighbor that is shown on uh, this image with a red arrow for the neighbor, as well as the one that we have already and we are using that. Um, can you go next, please? So we did some uh, search on the, if this is, a pattern that we see in the neighborhood, and we found some precedent that is shared here. The um, the yellow mark icon with uh, red text is our property, and the other ones which are marked in pink with uh, yellow text are the other precedent that we you can see as a pattern in this neighborhood. Uh, can you go next, please? I'm moving forward to the other ones quickly. So the driveway, we've been working with staff. Uh, there is a variance about the, the width of driveway. What we did in coordination with uh, planning staff was to change the access to keep the six meter at the public right of way. And when we enter the um, the lot, we can, sh we are shrinking, we are actually, sorry, in increasing that to seven meter to gain access to the garage. 
Would you mind going to the next, please? So on 32% coverage variants, um, these are the precedent that it seems uh, as a pattern that is common in the neighborhood. As mentioned before, the red mark is our property and the blue icons are the other ones that are 30% um, in the area. Um, on item number four, the maximum height of site exterior wall, um, we, the green line shows the existing top of uh, main wall, which is at seven meters almost, and we are uh, much lower than 7.5. The reason that we have this variance is we have some windows for the bedrooms that are for those uh, windows we are having um, more than seven meters and if you add number and the dimension of a and b on the t on an addition they are 30 percent of total wall and as you can see the 9.5 uh, meter is taken from the top peak of that um, that windows that in, in reality, it's from, it's going from um, dimension A to zero as the shadow is a con can be a concern for this variance from city planning perspective. If you go to the next one, please. Same here, we are at 7.16 on the other elevation. This elevation is uh, facing the street. So we have the same condition that to accommodate those windows, dormers, we are having A, B, and C, which is starting from this dim dimension and they're going to the zero at the 9.5 meter, which is in the va variance. Uh, would you mind going to next? And the other item which we had was the side setback that it, the adjacent neighbor on the other side of the street has 1.5 meter and we are 1.8. And there are some other um, resident in the area that is marked in, on this. Right. Sir, can you summarize, please? Sure. Quickly on the last one, um, there, there was a city objection letter that I would like to address if the neighbor is uh, here. The, this item is for okay, so, uh, thank you. For thank you. No worries. I just no wanted worries. to ask uh, on this section of Ellerslie where you uh, want to put the driveway. It's a through street, isn't it? There's no stop control on that on that street. The, st the stop signs are on Cobden, aren't they? Uh, this, I cannot recall that. I don't see a stop sign on the image, no. Yeah, the, uh, the stop signs are in Cobden. There's no stop signs on Ellerslie. It's a through street. Okay. Uh, does the uh, committee have any questions of the speaker? Ms. Senker? Yeah, so just that I'm getting this uh, straight in my mind and with the questions that you've also asked, Mr. Chair, um, I, I wanted to ask the agent if he could explain to me again um, why transportation's uh, report is not a concern for him? Oh, actually, it is a concern for sure. So there were two items on the report. One was the repairing of the curb cut that we already provided that. But with the build form and the uh, existing curb cut, we've been thinking that by pushing the access as far as possible, same as the other neighbor, which has been approved recently on the other side of the street, we would be able to uh, answer the question of being a, close to the intersection. Did you not ask transportation or negotiate or talk to them about it? Because as you could see, this is their professional report to us, me not being an expert in this. Um, I, I feel resistant to move forward unless there was some sort of positive report from transportation. Um, you could say you've done this, you could show it in the plans, but unless transport uh, you know, lets us know that this is acceptable, um, I wouldn't wanna go uh, uh, against something that takes precedent over a build. Sure. So my, yeah, so my question to you is, you know, really 
we understand what transport is asking, um, you know, but was there any type of discussion with them before coming here today? Um, there was discussion by the architect and then the, the reason that the owner wants to proceed with this one was mostly the president that is on the other side of the street and is built recently. And uh, also this street is not a very, the traffic wise, it's not a very busy street. So comparing the traffic on two streets, they are not that much of different that would be can tell this is a very main arterial road. It's uh, in, in the network of the traffic network is, we can S say almost sir, the same. Sir, I, I think, sir, what, what Ms. Sankar is politely telling you is that she doesn't feel comfortable yes. going forward with a contradictory report from our professional staff. And I offered you the opportunity to defer the application to discuss it with transportation. If you don't defer it and you know, when your application happens to be refused, you'll have to refile and it's gonna cost you a whole new application fee. So right. think about it. So Do I have, time we, to we have uh, I'll, I'll ask, does the committee have any further questions of the speaker? There being none, could I get a motion on this application, please? Ms. Sankar? Um, I, I feel badly doing this, but I think that the, the, the agent has had the opportunity where it was explained to him that he has the option to defer or move forward. Um, he chose to move forward with this, and I cannot accept um, uh, you know, um, approving this application without support from transport for the type of application. There are some that we do, but in this type of application, there's still too much unknown, and I'm not sitting there doing a traffic study to understand this, so I have to rely on the experts. So for that reason, I motion to, re you know, refuse this application. Okay, thank you. Some, uh, someone to second Ms. Uh, Sankar's motion? Mr. Hunt seconds. All those in favor? That motion uh, opposed? Mr. Khan dissenting, that motion carries. Sir, your application has been refused. Thank you very much. Item number 19, 35 Crossburn Drive. I have two people registered to speak. I have a Mehdi Ajvand, are you there? A-J-V-A-N-D, are you there? Hi, yes, I'm here. Uh, my name is Nushin Mozafari uh, from Hyphen Studio, representing the case. Okay, thank you, madam. If I could, uh, just wanted to, to say here, I'm looking at your file. There's a uh, number of reports here. There's a report from urban, uh, re recommended conditions from urban forestry. There's a transportation services report dated the 1st of March, uh, which indicates they have no objections to the proposed driveway width. We have a report from city planning dated the 1st of March of uh, this year. They have no objections uh, subject to the following modifications, uh, which apparently you have agreed to, which is eliminating variance number three regarding the number of stories, eliminating variance number four regarding the second story platform area, increasing variance number six regarding the west side yard setback from 0 0.61 meters to 1.22 meters, eliminating variance number seven regarding the driveway width, and increasing variance number nine regarding the east side yard platform setback from 0 0.66 meters to 1.52 meters. So madam, I just wanted to ask, did you have an opportunity to read these reports? Uh, yes, uh, we had, and uh Actually, these changes are uh, the result of our back and forth with the planning department uh, to have their support. And I want to uh, make these modifications to the application. Okay. So, so uh, variance number two is eliminated. Hang on just a second, madam. Uh, let's, sure. uh, let, let's just go. Th so are you, are you proposing to make more changes? Uh, yes, variance okay. number two well, is okay. also removed. 
Madam, let, let's, let's go through your application clause by clause and, and see which ones you're changing. Is variance number okay. one staying the same? Yes. Variance number two? Variance number two, uh, the wording is uh, right, so uh, we, I think we have no choice rather than removing it. So it should say that the height of exterior wall for the front and rear walls, not the side okay. walls. Madam, let, let's just go through the application and make the changes. Variance number two is being deleted? Yes. Okay, variance number, number three. Variance number three regarding is removed. The, is removed. Variance number three is deleted. Variance number four regarding the second story platform area that's deleted. Is removed. Okay. Variance number five stays the same. Yes. Variance number six, which is the west side yard setback. Uh, Improves to 1.22 meter. And go ahead, from 0 0.61 to 1.22 meters. Yes. And uh, number seven regarding the platform Removed. width is deleted. Uh, the derived width, yes, it's removed. Pardon me? Hang on. Barrier number seven for Hang the driveway. Variance number six regarding the west side yard setbacks. The variance number seven, the driveway width, you're not deleting, correct? Yes. It stays. No, it's it's removed. Oh, you're deleting it. Okay. All right. Yes. Variance number seven is deleted. Variance number eight, which it is stays. the uh, rear platform. Does that stay? Yes. Okay. And variance number nine, east side yard platform, that's being increased, the east side yard platform setback is being increased from 0 0.66 to 1.52. Yes. Okay. Terrific. And the rest remains the same. Terrific. Thank you, madam. If you could give us a brief presentation on what you see as the merits of your revised application. Yes, sure. Uh, if I want to uh, categorize the requested variances, for number one, we are asking for coverage. The allowed is 25% and we are asking for 30, almost 30.3%. 30 uh, and uh, the planning is supporting this. And uh, we are generally within the allowed uh, building envelope. Uh, variance number five, eight and nine are all regarding the east side setback for the building, for the rear deck and the, for the uh, front porch that are all aligned together. And uh, instead of 1.8 meter, uh, we have 1.52. So uh, I should mention that this uh, side setback variance is only for a rear for portion of the wall and uh, 40% of the front portion has two meter extra set side setback. Uh, variance number six is for the west side setback, which is uh, improved to 1.22. And this is also uh, for a portion of the wall. Uh, this one is for the front portion. And 35% of the rear portion uh, has 2.4 meter of extra side setback. Variance number 10 is the deck projection, uh, which, uh, which is a 4.94 meter. And considering the big setback on the side, uh, I think it uh, doesn't uh, really impact the neighbors. Uh, variance number 11 and 12 are under old bylaw. For both, we are complying with the new bylaw. Uh, if you look at the elevations, the total height of the building under uh, citywide zoning bylaw is 10 meter. And this is uh, measured from the center of the road to the midpoint uh, of the road. It had to be to the midpoint, but uh, it's not in this case because, uh, because the flat portion of the roof 
is 31 percent instead of 25 percent of the roof and as you see uh, obviously and clearly the proposal is a, a slope roof but uh, the examiner is considering this as a flat roof because of that uh, extra portion of flat roof on top and uh, for that reason uh, the height of building under old bylaw is taken to the top, not to the mid of the roof. And the actual variance should be uh, 9.61 uh, instead of 8.8 8 .8 meter, if, if, if this was considered as a, uh, a slope roof. And for the first floor height, also we are complying with the new bylaw. The uh, first floor height is 1.2 meter from the established grade, but uh, it's uh, more than uh, allowed under the old bylaw. And I should mention that uh, both of these variances are a result of the center of the uh, center line of the road being much lower than uh, the established grade. It's almost 66 centimeter lower than established grade. And uh, center line of the road is the benchmark for the height calculations on their old bike. Uh, I, I would be uh, happy to answer any questions. Okay, thank you. Uh, does the committee have any questions of the speaker? There being none, I'll go to the next person on the list. I have a Kaylin Millison. Are you there? Hello, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Can I get your full name and address, please? My name is Callan Melasan. Uh, I live at 37 Crossburn Drive. Okay, thank you, sir. If you'd like to give us your thoughts on this application. Um, I, uh, I actually sent, uh, sent the material back. If you could please open the file uh, called 35 Crossburn uh, PDF and go to the first picture there, please. What's that? Okay. Yeah, yeah, we're just, we're just finding it now, so if you want there. to continue. Yeah, it's, if, it's, if, you, yes. if you'd like to continue with your presentation, we'll find that for you. Yes, thank you so much because um, it's very important. Uh, this area um, bordered by Crossbone Drive on the on the uh, west side, uh, south and east side, uh, it's it's a square of uh, 16, 17 houses where there is no house that's even comparable to, to this height. Uh, what you see there on the top picture is a picture that uh, is taken from the, the, the window of the future house. You could see above the 37 crossburn and you could see the 51, 53 and 55 um, uh, crossburn uh, drive uh, houses, their entire backyards and the complete view of their bedroom windows. Um, if you if you look on the north side, it's pretty much the same picture. All of these houses are bungalows. Everything looks down from a towering height that's unprecedented for, for this group of houses in everybody's backyard. So all of the square of, of these of these backyards, um, it's, it's losing any type of privacy uh, because of the deck and because of the, the height of, of the of the second floor. Um, I, I I live next door on 37. I'm to the I'm to the east of this property. The sh the shade the sh the shadow that this uh, house is going to cast is is just ridiculous. You could see uh, my patio is if you look on the, on the top uh, picture there is on the on uh, located on the bottom left side. That's where I have a patio that we spend most of the summer outside. That's going to be completely under uh, shade at all times. My cedar trees on that side of the house are going to die. Uh, I will have not only not you know lack of privacy, but no no greenery around, and the deck at the at the back just exaggerates all of this. Uh, like there is there is nothing that I can say or do on my backyard without being subject to possible observation from 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 this house. And that's the the case for everybody around. I sent you a, a letter with uh, I think it's about twelve signatures from all of the people living in that in those groups of houses. Um, Unfortunately, not a lot of them can waste eight hours to wait for this hearing, so it's very difficult. Um, but but um, it's 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 big. The 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 um, the super raised 
first floor is is um, is just is just not seen in that neighborhood. This is the south view where you could see the height compared to the other house, which is not a small house. It's a completely two story house. It's just that it's, it's, it's not exaggerated, just like this one. And you could see the view on all of the bungalows around uh, on the west side. That's all of the Crossburn Drive. This will be towering above that. That's This is only at seven meters high. This is what a person standing in the window would look at. Um, I, I don't know if, how you feel about that only, or if it matters at all, but I can assure you for all of us, it matters a great deal in the neighborhood. Um, it's, it's invasive, um, it's out of character, and it's a complete outlier uh, to everything that's around it right now. And I, I'm not trying to stand in, 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 you know, in the way of progress, but at least build it, build it to the bylaw, old or new, whatever the bylaw is, but build it to that. There is absolutely no circumstance for this house to be so much taller than everything in that, in that group of houses. Thank you so much. This is all I had. To, to, sir, I just wanted to ask you, you, you understand that the, the height of the building complies with the bylaw, the new City of Toronto bylaw. That's not what I heard. Yeah, and that, that's the, not what, the, the what only the, the bylaw for height that they're going for is re with reference to the old, to an old obsolete North York bylaw. But the new City of Toronto bylaw, which even if it was a two story building, would allow it, it, it would still be over 10 meters. All right, so then, it's, uh, I, I, then I, I, I truly don't understand why we're being sent information that's obsolete. Um, it's only, be it's only because it, they're, they, they're still technically in place until they're rescinded, which should be happening very soon. Mm. But it, uh, other, it, than, other than that, sir, the, the, of, other of than that, sir the, building, the building complies with the height bylaw of the new City of Toronto bylaw. Um, does the neighborhood, uh, you know, uh, account for anything in this particular case, or it doesn't matter at all? No, it's that's allowed as of right. Okay, then. Well, then, then um, if I knew that, I wouldn't have wasted the eight hours today. So, I mean, you got to get your act together. This, this is is just ridiculous. <laughs> like, if you send me information that's not compliant, I will argue for it to be compliant. But if you if you tell me it's it's all compliant, then you know why am I here? Well, all, all the information is available on on the city's website, sir. So it's you can look it up there. But uh, uh, that's the reality of it. So anyway, I'll just ask: Does the committee have any further questions of the speaker? There being none, we'll go back to the agent. Are you there, madam? Yes, uh, if I want to uh, quickly address the neighbor's uh, concerns, first of all, the deck that uh, he's uh, referring to is uh, related to the variance number four, which is already eliminated. Uh, the uh, proposed deck is a very regular one uh, at a very regular height, uh, I think 1.5 meter from the ground, and it's not a big deck. Uh, Actually, as I said, the building uh, is generally within the allowed building envelope. The length of the house is uh, smaller than allowed. And uh, although we have side setbacks on both sides, but uh, it's only for a portion of the wall and the rest has a generous setback on both sides. Uh, for the height, as you uh, mentioned, the total, uh, there, there are uh, three uh, limitations for the height. Uh, the total height to the top of the roof uh, is complying with the bylaw. The wall height measured to the uh, underside of the soffit is uh, complying with the bylaw as we have removed the wall height variance. And only the height measured from the center line of the road to the mid. Uh, under the old white guy is not complying. The pictures that uh, the neighbor is showing and he claims that they are from 7.4 uh, meter of the height. Uh, if Even if it's uh, correct, uh, it doesn't seem so, uh, but uh, it's uh, a low height of the walls and uh, 
still it's not at the eye level of someone that is standing on the uh, second floor, proposed second floor, and about the super raised uh, house, or uh, I, I, I'm not sure what uh, what he means because uh, the height of the first floor complies with the bylaw, and uh, it's only a variance uh, for a minor uh, number under the old bylaw. And uh, for the sunlight, uh, the direction of the sun uh, sunlight is somehow that uh, our building doesn't won't have any uh, shadow uh, on uh, on the uh, east uh, property's neighbor. Okay, thank you, madam. Just uh, make sure I've got this down correctly. I want to go through these revisions and make sure they're correct. Variance number two, you're deleting. Variance number three, you're deleting. Variance number four is deleting, is being deleted. Variance number five stays. stays. Variance number six, uh, the uh, west side yard setback is being increased from 0 0.61 to 1.22 meters. Variance number seven is being deleted. Variance number eight stays the same. Variance number nine, uh, that is the uh, east side yard setback from the front platform is being increased from 0 0.66 meters to 1.52 meters. Variances 10, 11, and 12 stay the same. Is that correct? Yes. Okay, thank you. Does the committee have any questions of the speaker? There being none, could I get a motion on this revised application, please? Mr. Kidd. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, I, I think the uh, uh, proposed variances uh, as amended uh, meet the uh, intent of the uh, uh, zoning bylaws. And I'd like to put forward a motion to accept the application with the uh, revisions which you've, you've uh, previously read into the record. I, I won't uh, go through that again. And I, I'd like to make that subject to uh, forestry condition as well. Thank you very much, Mr. Kidd. Someone to second that? Mr. Hunt seconds. All those in favor? That motion carries unanimous, unanimously. Madam, your revised application has been unanimously approved subject to urban forestry. And that, I believe, finally ends our morning session. Uh, we will, Thank you. We will uh, break for uh, how long, committee? Half an hour? Okay, we'll go for half an hour. We'll be back at uh, three four. Uh, wow, three forty. Okay, see you then. <laughs>